Welcome back to Punch Drunk Nerd, the podcast where three friends, three amigos, three bambinos come together to talk about nerd shit. We are back, baby. I am married, baby. Look at this gold ring. Got scratched up in Paris. Can you believe it? Uh, I was trying to pull a John Wick move down those John Wick stairs. I sent you guys that video. That was cool. I walked up yep. there and I was like, uh, I think this is where John Wick was filmed. We climbed up the stairs and we went to the huge ass church. And of course, I had to act out like I was fighting. I had to act like I was falling down the stairs. Uh, unfortunately, I did scratch my ring doing it, but memories. Um, so yes, <laughs> I'm married, and I'm also Luis Gonzalez, and with me is Miguel Sanchez and Deadpool. And listen, we're back. We're lazy, and it's going to take some time to get back into our groove here. So we're jet lagged. We're super jet lagged. Uh, no feature discussion, but you know, Martin Scorsese's uh, movie is coming out in a couple weeks. We're gonna, uh, that's obviously going to be the feature discussion. We're going to do a ranking of our top 10 Scorsese films for sure. Um, but you know what? As far as news goes, there's nothing really there we want to talk about. But I do want to talk about this before we talk about what we're into. Since we've been gone for so long, we're going to talk about all the things we've watched, we've been into for the past month. But before all that, we had a discussion about Scorsese's new movie and how it'd be in three and a half hours long. We talked about okay. pee breaks. I want to talk about pee breaks in movies. All right. Okay. Now, I asked this question to our text chain. I said, listen, Miguel, are you going to watch it streaming or are you going to go in the theater? Because my thought was, I would rather have you watch it streaming and not miss anything than go to the theater and then pee twice and miss scenes. I want and, people to see and, movies in theaters. Listen, I, I'm a person who wants to see movies in theaters, but gun to my head, I'd rather have you watch it at home streaming, not miss a scene, than go to the theaters, pee twice, and miss two scenes. That's what my thoughts were. And then Ed brought up the point that, well, if he's watching it at home, he's going to be distracted on his phone, yeah, and he won't yeah. be as focused, which I didn't think about, which is a great point. So, yeah. Uh, so I, listen. As a, wait, I've, I have an opinion on this. If you if you don't mind, Miguel, uh, <laughs> I've known Miguel for a long time, and uh, basically this is like a no win situation uh, because <laughs> you go to the theater. Our good boy is just he's there to enjoy himself. He's vibing. He's gonna want a beer <laughs> or two. I am in a three and a half hour movie, probably six, and he's gonna want to you know. Drink those beers. He's going to have to order them, and he's going to have to release yeah. them out yeah. into the wild. If he is at home, yeah, he's going to have even more distractions, and it's going to turn into a limited series of one hundred percent. Yeah, I would, yeah. So I would, I would rather him be so intrigued by the theatrical experience of what he didn't catch that he would go back for another viewing. At the I love theater. that. I love uh, that. Ed. And again, and again, and again. Yeah, <laughs> till yeah, Marty yeah. can't take no more. Um, <laughs> but I, the, the uh, as you were saying, Luis, the theater is the way to go. Of course, uh, like this movie, I'm even thinking about IMAX, baby. You know, oh, I'm going uh, Dolby, baby. I don't think I it are, needs to be I, IMAX. I, I, I think this is the moment where go Dolby. This is one of those movies where it's not made for IMAX screening. You'll have a better sound experience. You'll get the whole Atmos sound instead of the IMAX sound. I prefer the Dolby sound over. I've got my tickets. I'm ready I'll to go. I'll see where my, my nearest Dolby is. Well, I know things are tricky for you because you're Regal, and so you have Regal XD, and you have but Regal... But they just redid that IMAX. Finally, it's open again. Oh, at the Edwards. Yeah, at the Edwards Marquee okay. in Houston. That might so, benefit for you. That I haven't, might be good I haven't you. seen it yet, but you know, I'm excited. It's got this beautiful platinum IMAX logo on the outside, nice. and you're just like, oh, that's sexy. Like I would do cocaine off of that for the first week. Before Hell you know, yeah. people get their grubby fucking. I just want you to it. go to a garage sale, buy a huge <laughs> IMAX size screen, Ooh. like sign, so you could just do cocaine lines on it. You know, let's I... watch Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> let's watch it. <laughs> Martin Scorsese would be proud. He would love that. Uh, you know, back in well, the seventies. We're talking about Miguel. Miguel, do you want us to voice your opinion? You know, we're talking for honestly, you. Honestly, honestly, this is this. We're like this your week parents. Been, we're telling this, you what to do. <laughs> this week has been such an Ed and Luis week, man. Like every time we get into a chat, I, I hop in, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm not a part of this conversation anymore. <laughs> Let me step back. <laughs> Let me step back and just enjoy the view. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, first off, I don't know. I get it. I get where you're coming from, but I just felt like I was making it clear all year long how much I really want to see Killers of the Flower Moon. I like know. I, I'm gonna see when I when I I said I've said this like for three podcasts in a row now. When I see the trailer and it makes me want to go see it, well then guess what? 
I'm just going to go see it. You yeah. know? Uh, so I am 100% going to go see it in theaters. I am going to pee during and because I'm a human being and I, I know who I am. I'm just going to be honest. Uh, to be fair, okay? I'm, I'm the weirdo who has trained himself not to pee for three I trained myself hours. not to pee too. Well, here's the deal too. Here's the deal too. And this is, and, and you guys, you know, I'm always kind of just joking around when I say I sit front left, but, and I don't always sit front left. No. But I do like to be like accessible to the aisle. Okay. You know what I mean? Because I want to hop in, hop out. I want to be as quick as possible without bothering people. Look, you know? in as case a good, of an emergency. As, yeah. as a good husband now, you know, as someone has to look after their wife, as someone to look after <laughs> the other. Mm-hmm. Me, uh, selfishly, I want to be right dab in the middle. I will wait. Yeah. I will wait to find the perfect show time so I can get that. Except I will be going with my wife and I have to and out of respect, I want to make sure her ease of experience to go to the restroom is easy fast yeah and no disruptions so unfortunately yeah. i had to make the call of going to the far to the mid far left so there's a row that's the closest to the center i chose that row and not like you know the back so back. she's not a middle middle scene if it wasn't a no. three and a half hour movie i i would definitely force us into like a two and a half hour two hour we can hold it but three and a half i like say this a little bit it's a little bit it just went over just a little bit and i want to make sure it's not you, miserable for her you know and at the amc's that i've been going to lately you know, they have the reclining seats. So when you when you hop up and you walk down the aisle to go pee or whatever, like there's a good there's good space, man. Yeah, for you to yeah, yeah. AMC, scooch on down. You're not God. bothering people. Like they basically just like pull their feet in a yeah. little bit and you don't really but bother I wa- that. I, I wanna give the, I wanna give her the first class experience. This is what she does. Done. Not like Oh, I love that. I love that for her. <laughs> I love that. I like that. Yeah. I like that she's not being ridiculed for having to go pee pee during exactly. the movie. She could just swim. But, but, yeah. but Daddy Miguel, <laughs> Daddy Miguel getting raked across no, the coals well, you're here. On a, you're okay, on a movie podcast. You're on a movie podcast. You have higher standards. Yeah. Like that answering right. your phone during the movie. You know what I mean? Like oh, uh, sometimes I do text a lot during movies. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, yo, this movie is fire right now. It's like, what are you? Are yeah. you in the movie right I now? I did. <laughs> guys, Robert, De- Robert De Niro is definitely getting that Oscar. Oh, he's fucking killing it. I have, I have definitely sent those texts before too. No, I, I have one. Hundred percent been asked by an employee to stop texting before. So you I, are you serious, Miguel? Miguel? Yes. Oh my god! Me but, and Ed texted separately no. about this. We're like, is Miguel in the movie right now? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, who yeah, is. I was. I was. And then we, so, and then we, we stopped agreed. texting you. Yeah, we agreed to stop texting you right away. So you wouldn't have to look now at your getting, phone. I understand. Now I understand. First off, I love my ego is through the roof right now that you guys are hopping on a separate chat to be like Miguel. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Miguel for a second, real quick. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go. No, out of respect, no, we no, stopped texting no, you. Just, so I, you I will say this: she wasn't. Exactly. It, it wasn't like I was. I wasn't like someone complained and she had to come tell me. She brought me my drink and I was in the middle of texting you guys quietly. <laughs> okay. And she goes, "Hey, hey, put your phone away." And I was like, "Okay." But I was in a seat where there was a wall right behind me. There was no one right behind me, and there was no one in my in my sides. So I was it's, over here quietly texting to myself. You know what I mean? It's no big deal. No, no. It, it's, being uh, in the movie theater is like being in an airplane. No one's going to get to me. <clears throat> just pure. Just uh, like, well, and I'll say this: now that I have the subscription, it's like I can just go see movies whenever I want now, up to three times a week. So who gives a shit if I miss a scene? All Miguel, right. Are you about What's to com- are you gonna about to commit up? eleven hours to this film? If I see it twice, three times. I'm not seeing. You said it you can see times. a movie three times in a week. Yeah, but I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing Killers of the Flower. Okay, Flag why just? I'll the, go see it twice, and then I'll not? go see fucking Saw Ten right after if I want to. Oof. <laughs> I saw X and the Furious. <laughs> oh, <laughs> baby, sign me up. You already know Dom Toretto getting out of that trap. All right. <laughs> He's not even in there in the first place, to be honest. Oh, no. okay? his contract, because I want to get in. <laughs> I want to get in. Because <laughs> Saw Guy is like, you know, actually, I get it. No, he's got a good heart. He's free. <laughs> That's the one that does it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, anyway. I don't like being the topic of conversations anymore. That was. Why? This is nice. We're lifting your ears. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're trying to we're flame your little energy here. Yeah. No, I'm and, 100% and gonna see this movie. Super excited for it. I'm excited for I it. Can't too. wait. I'm I'm getting a team together. Sarah is already on board. I got two other guys coming. I'm inviting <laughs> anybody. Like I'm just like, please go support Martin Scorsese. <clears throat> but can we talk? Can we talk? Can we be real for just one second, though? Okay. 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 Like three and a half hours. Uh, that's a tv show that's a tv show babies i'd rather i'd rather yes 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 i would rather i would rather sit at home and do do four episodes okay and love the shit out of my life okay 
You never Vincent, come out of a movie. Vincent, the okay, your life. first off, let me ask you this. Let's say you get that perfect middle <laughs> seat, baby. I'm gonna let me paint a picture. Close your eyes, I'll paint a picture. All right. You go, you get that middle seat, you booked it weeks in advance, you're like, oh hell yeah. All right. You sit down, the movie starts, the people that booked the two seats next to you on the other side, they just show up. They just came from the gym. They reek of BO. They didn't shower. Okay. <laughs> that never happens. You know what I mean? Uh, and then they I... fucking talk. Then they fucking talk real loud and during the trailers. <clears throat> and they you text their like, friends <clears throat> during the movie. <laughs> they text their friends, but not not in a position where it's not disrupted. It's right in your face, full brightness. Okay. Let you're telling me. Another... You, you're telling me you wouldn't you wouldn't want to go home and just watch the movie there? Come on now. Let me paint another picture for you. You're at home on your couch. <laughs> yeah. You, you you opening credits of the killers of the flower moon yeah forest needs your attention you're like fuck all right yeah one second pause it come yeah. back you take care of that whatever you come back press play again oh fucking yeah. murphy is playing with that fragile uh -huh. thing that he's he such a derp plays with and uh you gotta go take care of that and i was like oh now i gotta go take a shit yeah. and <laughs> i always you know, i always have to take my movie shit that's right <laughs> yeah, right, like right, dab in the middle. right at the 17 minute mark, I go, oh, oh. <clears throat> yeah, you know, just like, uh, there will be a time to watch it in streaming, yeah, so enjoy it in theaters while it's around. You no, know? I'm definitely gonna go see it in theaters. I don't, you know, I, <clears throat> Mons I'm not gonna, I love not with us long. he's not with us long. First off, I didn't go see Irishman in theaters because I was like, three hours is just a little long. But then when I actually sat down and watched that movie, I had a really good time and watched it a couple different times, like just all the way through sitting down. Different yeah. Variations. So, yeah. So it's like, OK, maybe I could for one of my favorite directors. You know, sit you, down and go you sent me movie. that uh, breakdown of like uh, the Irishman yeah. in four episodes. Did you and like so, that? So I started it. But funny enough, when I got to the first at the end of the first section, I was like, I want to keep watching. So I just yeah, kept yeah. going to the next episode, quote unquote, episode yeah. section. Yeah. But then um, it got really late and my eyes were like doing this, you know? Yeah, so I, I was like, that. I think it's I time to, to count out. And so, you know, as that's I get okay. older, I just can't hold it anymore. My eyes. So it's been. Uh, yeah. Well, to be fair with the Irishman, that shit was literally only out for a week because that was a Netflix film. Yeah. And they don't care about their theatrical runs. No. They're all about streaming. Whereas Apple <coughs> has given Martin Scorsese like a, a big theatrical run. Before sharing it on Apple TV, yeah, because they're all about that prestige. <laughs> oh, it's going to be on Apple TV. See, that's the thing yes. is, I'm not, I don't have Apple TV. You know, you're going to get I'm it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. So you're going to. I'll go to the theaters. I'll see it for free on my. I had a knife. You're going to. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, no, you could watch Ted Lasso. You could watch Colors of the Flower Moon. You could watch uh, Severance. Macbeth. The Macbeth. tragedy of Macbeth. You guys, have you guys uh, seen some of these? Jason Momoa scene. Winner Coda. Uh, have you guys seen some of these movies on uh, Apple TV? I'll tell you the two movies I did see. Uh, I saw the Justin Timberlake movie where uh, he gets out of jail and he's like, he's like soft on the neighbor's kid. He's like making sure, making sure he gets through life. You know what I mean? He's I don't okay. Know what you know, is. he takes him under his wing. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? I don't. And know. I, I saw know, that. I know the movie you're talking about. Yes. And then I saw that Tom Hanks submarine movie. Oh yeah, um, Grey Greyhound. Couldn't tell you. It was pretty, oh, yeah. pretty forgettable. Um, Greyhound. And then Coda, I watched that one, and I loved the subject matter. You son of a bitch. <sighs> Just Man, didn't think I cried it was a bucket a... for that movie. I need well, to you're half deaf, it. so you relate, and I get it. You know, I get it. I'm not talking shit. I get it. But also, like, you know, it's not for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For it won an Academy Award. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's for everybody, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it right, won okay, best yeah. movie. It's for everybody. No, it looked like a Hulu original, but yeah, sure. I'll give it an Academy <laughs> Award. All right? Uh... Hey, oh, I paid four ninety nine for this. This is what I'm talking about for the month. Right. I bought a new iPhone and he gave it to me for three months free for this. Uh, I will say this. I will say this. I do love buying an Apple product and getting Apple TV for free for a little bit. It's like, okay, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I got this new iPhone and it's telling me that I have, what do I have available? Oh, Services included. Miguel. I have Apple oh. Arcade, Apple News for three months, and Apple Fitness for three months. Will I be using them? Oh. No. Yeah. Because I don't know uh, what's going on in the news. Go baby. ahead. You should you should talk to Kristen because she'll tell you Apple News. I didn't know this. I don't check our finances apparently. Uh, she she subscribes to the Apple News uh -huh. and yeah, we get that she every month for her now. She that's like the way she gets her news. And I'm like, oh, I, okay, I guess I, maybe I should because I don't really know what's going on in the world. You would like it because they do push. They just push that shit straight to you. I don't want to get pushed. Sorry, sorry. She can get your news. You know how sorry. she can get sorry. your news. Go ahead. Reddit. 
Rare. He's about to be like the newspaper love. <laughs> all right, you sip the tea. I tell you what, you put on you put on your smoking jacket or whatever. Yeah. Um, what I, earlier I was going to say, Miguel. What else is coming to Apple TV is Napoleon. Uh, oh, now Bruce see, Bruce. we're talking movies that you guys are acting like I don't want to see. I, I didn't I, say I, you I, didn't want to see. Came out, came, sorry, I came okay. out, came out a little strong there. My bad, my bad. But I'm just saying. <laughs> I, <laughs> I I want to see Killers of the Flower Moon. I really want to see Napoleon. I want to see both of these movies. I had such a great time with Oppenheimer earlier this year. Like I am definitely down to see these historical uh dramas. Like sign me up. It's, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, I let's move on to our next uh subject which is uh well nothing because we don't have a feature discussion this week so let's just yeah, get into do. what we're into what is wait it? can we can we vibe for a sec let's do it oh. i don't care oh yeah oh, I wait i right. forgot you had a i forgot you we were getting paid for this go ahead ed yeah hey guys brought to you by m&ms and nestle candy is it nestle yes no nestle. it's like a it's like a mars corporation which is owned by nestle yeah, yeah I that's think those are two nestle different things everything. right no nah, nestle yeah. owns everything Mars okay. Wrigley. Mars Wrigley. Okay, so I was just walking around Five Below uh, today, uh, getting my Halloween costume together, um, and I came across Five Below. <laughs> Five Below already uh, always has these like more exotic flavors of uh, candy. Uh, for instance, I recently found that they had dark chocolate raisins. You know, that sounds delicious. Un- untapped, it was great. Um, but today I stumbled across um, some good old fashioned M and M's, the flavor of which are caramel cold brew, as in the coffee. Hold it up, hold it up, so we can see. All right, I got, I got the cold share size. Hot. Cold brew, caramel hot right cold now. brew. Cold That's brew is the so share hot right size. Now. Yeah, I know it's a rip off, right? No, bro. Inflation is crazy, man. That's You're not crazy. fucking telling me that's that's sh- that's shrinkflation. That's a single they call size. That. That's single no, serving. No, I'm a big boy, but no, yeah. no, no, no. If it's uh, 130 calories, we can handle that. You Ed, know real I mean? quick. Ed, real quick. Yeah. While you're telling us and you're talking about this thing and this whatever. Open that package on the side and count every single M M&M and M in that bag, and then I want to I want to report back. Family shareable size. Oh Suck a man, dick. this this will take. I'm gonna rain man this shit. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna wait uh 12 minutes for you to figure this out enjoy the silence everybody did he just say h 25 <laughs> okay 25 m&ms 25 I guess that is kind that's of a not lot. a lot uh well 25 is not bag. a lot would you that's eat 25 lot. m&ms in one in one sitting yes uh, are you talking minutes. about if you're talking Five about minutes. you're talking about original m&ms they are petite at best, they uh, like Hold it you up. do. You do twenty five in a mouthful. These exactly. aren't petite. These are twenty five. Stop. <laughs> okay, in a do, mouthful. You can do seven in a mouthful for sure. Oh, no, regular joking. M&Ms? Regular no joking. M&Ms? Seven. Seven in a okay. mouthful. Boom. Next podcast, I'm getting a bag of M and M's. Hold on. Hold on. out. Twenty five M and M's. We need it now. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is it. this is. We're stopping until this happens. I've got peanut M and M's. But uh, I won't for Ed. No, but I, that's I a big one. Those are big ones. Yeah, those I'm are talking, biggers. Yeah. I'm talking about the regular <laughs> size. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I, let's how, see. Many I have, that, how many are in that? How many are in that, I have a Luis? personal bag of M&Ms that I found. It okay. doesn't, out. It doesn't open matter how up. many are in. If he said he could have seven in a, in a mouthful. I, I will eat seven, seven of in these? a mouthful. Okay, hold on. No, I said 25, bitch. No, I know, but that's what's blowing my mind. That's a little hyperbolic. You said 25. That's a huge number, Ed. No one's eating fucking... Diabetics aren't even eating 25 in a handful. God damn. People are eating 25 M&Ms in a average... 14. Miguel, 14 M&Ms in here. Okay. Two servings. Louise, Louise, please. Louise, please. Louise, please. Do it. Just do it. Okay, hold on. Three. I mean, it's not even... We'll we'll fill time. We'll fill time. Hang on. I want to hear ASMR. Seven. Okay, we got it. Hold on. We got, no, I just, want you to do all fourteen. I want 14? All fourteen? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. How, I said, show us in your on, head. I said seven. I said seven. Now I'm asking no, you fourteen. Yeah, but I'm saying fourteen. Show it in your okay, head. Now I have to <laughs> do your bidding. I'm sorry. Okay, I didn't realize. Yeah. That. You're you're married now. Get used to it. Oh my god. That's not okay. even a mouthful. Put that all in your Shut mouth. Shut the okay. fuck up, Ed. It's fourteen. Okay. I okay, put this pushing it, but right, casually, I would do seven. Okay. Here we go. 
Easy. That's the easiest mouthful you ever had. I'm done. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm having Open a your time. mouth a little bit. No, no, no. Just like, no, don't, no. No, don't do that. <laughs> and I did it. Don't drink anything. Don't drink anything for 25 seconds. That was 14. M&M's. Right in my mouth. It's possible. Easy. I could I see how you could do more. That's insane. I could say you could do more than 14. Okay, I, I'm having a moment right now because I just like, I guess I don't love regular M&M's enough to do that because I, I always eat the peanut ones. I'm not getting 14 or 25 in my <laughs> mouth at a time. The peanut ones are bigger. I, I would say you can't do They're 14 huge. of those. That's too much. And you got to yeah, work a little no. bit harder. You do. No, with, with these guys, I could maybe do, let's see. I could maybe do right. <laughs> I could one. Make Michael Kite. <laughs> one Ed, M&M. I, Ed, I'm going to make your screen bigger so I can see you better. Hang on. <laughs> Let Two me see this M&M. M&M's. Just show them to me. Just pick one up so I can see it. That's, it looks like seven, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, like, six, seven, eight, like nine. Those look like the size of the... That is nine. That is nine M&M's. Nine. That's nine M&M's in my hand right now. <laughs> <laughs> Loudly indeed. <laughs> Loudly indeed. I could, I could maybe do 16 M&M's. L- I d- hold just one up, though. Hang on, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get all of them in my hand just to see what that would look like. Granted, okay. I have already eaten two. If you guys want to check us out at youtube.com slash at Punch Drunk Nerd, look, they look like peanut M&Ms. They're huge. They look They're like peanut big. M&M These, sizes. The, this is, for this size, this is more than a mouthful. But wait, wait this is going to yeah. keep you up. It's got a cold brew in them. <sighs> <sighs> oh, and it. it is 25 M&Ms. In the <laughs> yeah. Hey, it wouldn't be the... Yeah, it wouldn't be the... Fir- oh, now I've got the M&M sweats. <laughs> you know that like temporary tattoo don't, you get on your Don't hand touch is... anything right now or you'll transfer it onto the, the surface. I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch it in my mouth. What do it? Okay. No, I missed. Hang on. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is this is great for a great content. Content. Don't stop. Don't stop till you do it. Don't do it. No! <laughs> Okay, put all of them in your I mouth now. <laughs> no. <laughs> this was hysterical. Anyway, this was uh, not the way I expected things to go. Uh, but, yeah, anyway. Is it good? Do they taste I mean, like what, cold brew? It, yeah. Do they, they're, is, they're definitely caramelly at first, and you get the quote-unquote cold brew flavor at the end. It's all right. I prefer, I prefer things like... You ever had like chocolate espresso beans and stuff yes, like that? Good. Yeah, yeah. Where it's yeah, like yeah, a real, yeah. real kick of coffee. Oh man, oh man. It's not that. It's just kind of like a musky. How many of those taste. could you eat in one bite, huh? Oh, buddy. I've had some of those espresso uh, espresso beans and chocolate, and let me tell you, dude, I learned real quick. I can't That's do crack. that shit. No, <laughs> it's, it's crack. like crack, dude. Yeah. My teeth. I was all of a sudden. I realized I was grinding them. I was like, Ugh, "Fuck!" You go. You got oh, a dental little guard in the day. Yeah. yeah, it's not good. It's not good. Like a squirrel, just like meow, 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 meow. guys. I'm really. Hey, you said something a, a few minutes back, and uh, I just don't want it to feel like it's been overlooked. You said you were at the the five the five and dime or whatever. Uh, five oh, below. Five below. Getting a Halloween costume. What are you trying to be for Halloween? Would you rather wait for it to be a surprise? The fuck? We're not getting together for Halloween. We're gonna, right? have, a, no. we're gonna have a Halloween episode. We're gonna be dressed oh, up. Oh, we have time. We have, are we gonna be recording that week? I don't know. We'll record at some point beforehand. What day yeah, is I'm, I'm Halloween be... full on? You asked me know, like a Monday or Tuesday. Alexa, what day is Halloween on today? It's this year? on a Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. She just gave me the date. <laughs> so we'll record on the 25th we'll have a little a little halloween costume party episode will go up on the 27th we'll talk about chris you know halloween movies i love this this is the this is the the first podcast back after vacation you know what i mean like it is we're warming up to it you know what i mean yeah you know you'll get your news next week you'll yeah, get a news next you, week honestly yeah yeah we're uh, together you. today this is for this fuck is for you us. you dumb piece of seen, shit no, i haven't seen my best friends no <laughs> We've been texting though. I mean, Sarah was like, "Why are you texting? Who are you okay. texting in our honeymoon?" <laughs> Louise, you telling I'm, me she didn't text me. a single person? I don't know, don't but know. I was texting. Uh-huh. Tell me why. Tell me why I texted Ed the day after the wedding, and I was like, "Oh, I'm sad because like now our group chat's about to just like just plummet off the face of the I, earth." No, I didn't I realize. Allow it. 
Somebody got the somebody got the international plan. All right, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. AT and T told me I had no it, kids. so I used it. <laughs> no, for real. I'm still for on real. my family plan. Uh, so no. you know, let's go. No, I want to keep that chat going strong. I, I don't want it to die out at all. I'm I'm Bless trying you. to think of our next trip, but honestly, we have to celebrate Sarah's birthday. It's coming up, so that's going to be next year's thing, and then maybe the year after that, we'll have another boys trip. Oh, let's go. I'm I mean, I think it. a boys trip could be fitted really every year. So and honestly, I do too. San Diego next year for some prime rib. I do too. Friends. We friends. could do a boys trip next week for sure. Next week. Next week. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, that's the end of the episode. No, no, no. Well, okay. So M and M's. That's great. Uh, espresso beans. That's cool. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by M and M's. This episode is also brought to you by Punch Drunk Nerd. Um, you know, subscribe. Please leave a comment on our podcast site. Rate us. Uh, the more rating and stars we get, then maybe one day we'll be official Rotten Tomato reviewers. Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be cool? Ed, your review. Considering we were just like trashing Rotten Tomatoes a couple of weeks back. Yeah, hey, just last we, week we Ed, were talking about that. If we can that. get us early screenings to movies, I mean, <laughs> please. I mean, true that, true that, true that. <laughs> I'm ready to sell out. True that, true that, true that. <laughs> um, all, right, all right, let's. That's the uh, yeah news. We'll find out more news next week when we're back in our group feature discussion. Um, Tune in next week when we talk about that. Let's dive into what we're into. We've been gone for so long. Uh, we've been into a lot of stuff while we've been gone. I think I want to okay. actually begin. Go ahead. Maybe we have the same idea. I don't know. Do we? Summer movie wager. Yes. Okay, great. I don't want to lose the thread. Okay. I don't want it to either. Listen, it's very important. I say there's a couple other things I'd love to talk about. I see a lot of really good stuff from everyone, but I think we need to bring it back to life, to reality. Okay. Miguel Sanchez won the summer movie wager. He really did. Okay, he called a, it. That was a big deal for Daddy Miguel. Okay. Yeah, super big. So, yeah, it's probably the best thing that's ever happened to me. Um, so, I, because I won, I was able to, you know, tell you guys to watch things. Okay. And I picked like this stupidest list of movies, apparently. You know what I mean? Not, not stupid, but just like so random. You know what I mean? Like, what are we doing here? You know? Yeah. Un- unbalanced. Yes. Un- unequal. Unhinged. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> uh, I gave I gave both of you movies. I the whole idea was that I was thinking, okay, well Ed hasn't seen this movie and Luis hasn't seen I love this. This, other this movie. is amazing. And and maybe I can get best of both worlds. I can have my cake, I can eat it too. I can get my friends to watch movies I've seen and yes. and we you can want, be silly. You've been that, wanting us to see for a while. That I think are good. One is definitely really good. I think the other one's really good too to be honest. I mean like yeah. Tom Hanks kind of like tries in that movie. So <laughs> it's like no. <laughs> and the good thing uh, is so, so yeah, you said you asked me to watch Stephen Perfect Ryan, you asked Ed to watch Deep Impact. I actually watched both of them and I believe Ed's watched both of them too. So I we went above it. We went above and beyond so we would be fresh. I love this. So we can all talk about this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. okay so here, which one do you want to go first? Yeah. I'd like to talk to Luis first. Okay. Would. Now I'll tell you why, Ed. It's because, because like Saving Private Ryan is one of the best movies that's ever been made. And it's like Luis, like this is if a he, slam dunk for Luis. Like if yeah. he has a negative opinion about this movie, he's wrong. I'm going to be canceled. You know I mean? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. But oh, then I want to, the, the fuck off. Then I want to hear what Ed has to think about <laughs> deep impact. You know what I mean? Like, I want to go in that order. All right, and, yeah, and, I'm going to pull and, myself. I'm going to pull myself another whiskey. Okay. It's, oh God! <laughs> it's been a minute since I've seen that movie too. So when I rewatched, it, I was like, "Oh, this is the movie." Um, yeah. The Deep Impact. Yeah. But we can get talk okay. about that. So okay. So um, Luis, you had never seen Saving Private Ryan, right? Okay. I've tr- I you know going to Europe, it takes a lot of time, a lot of hours. Uh, you get jet lagged. You, you have a lot of chances to watch movies. So uh, great opportunity for me to watch Saving Private Ryan during my time away. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this movie's pretty great. I'm not into war movies. I will say that. I'm not into war movies as much. Fair. And, um, it's a real, it's a realization I've kind of come across. Like, oh, you know what? Maybe it's okay. I don't have to like everything. And, you know, more movies. It's okay. That's okay. uh, And war movies that maybe I'm not into as much. But, uh, this one I was, and I think it's one of Steven Spielberg's, one of his great, like, movies, like, top five for sure. I was the, the, the comp, like, okay. I feel like Steven Spielberg went into this blue phase after artificial intelligence where everything was kind of bloomy and glowy yes. and blue and uh, i was just not vibing blue. with that look and yeah. the cinematography on this thing is incredible i think this is peak steven spielberg at his look and i wish i could just get more of this in this modern day take um i had a the framing was incredible the sound i mean listen okay as an editor the sound design and the way it was placed and everything there i mean it really pulled you in 
and just told a whole of the story by itself. Okay, I just want to talk about a little shout out. Air, AirPods, AirPods Pros too. All right, AirPods Shout out to Pros too. Uh, this episode's brought Come to you by AirPods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spatial wait, audio watch, noise cancellation. Wait, how did you watch the movie? Oh no, Luis, how did you watch this movie? I watched it on my iPad with my AirPods. Okay, that's okay, Ed. That's okay, Ed. That's not your tiny little Ed. success. Okay, it's Ed. a, it's a, it's an iPod, iPad Pro. iPad I'm Pro. traveling. I'm traveling throughout Europe, and this is what I'm doing internationally. I'm under, I, I'm under the bed. I have I have my covers over me, and then I have the iPad maybe five inches away from my face. That's and, basically IMAX, and I'm creating a little tunnel movie experience. Okay, so this is I am in I am enveloped in this experience. The sound is pulling me in. The cinematography is incredible. Um, that's so yeah. I just wanted to mention those few things because I have a feeling I have a, I have opinions about Steven Spielberg's Blue Phase. Um, I agree. But, I, I would love to have that conversation sometime. Audio. Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. Know. Now, now let's talk about the whole Saving Private Ryan itself. Yeah. Um, when they were like okay. running around saying like, we have to save this man. I was like, why? Why does anyone really care? Why is anyone like, Uh-oh. are we really going to pull a side? You're arriving. I, 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 I just like, I don't, would we really do this as people in America? Like, I, I think I could just, I didn't see it as like, like a thing. That, some top general was like, we have to send him home. This you know one I mean? person, Brian, yeah. Brian Cranston with one arm said, I, we have to, I, no, that was to get a, him and, the hell out of there. Right. And so yeah. right when, when they said that, I was like, oh, great. We got to, we got to force this plot device to save private Ryan. Oh. And we're just going to move over. But then actually that's what made it really good because everybody else was asking the same question I was asking. So yeah. you have the troop going in being like, why are we risking the our lives? Are we doing? Why are we doing this? And the fact that it brings that into question really pulled me in. At first I was like, stupid. Oh, wait, what? We're all thinking this? And I think it brought up these bigger questions about, you know, the food bar and like, you know, what do we do when things go wrong? And it's just like everyone's motivations, why they're doing things and uh, what is duty. It just brought up a lot of interesting questions and to see everybody kind of go through their journey together as a group, as these close band of brothers, as you might say. Um, uh... You might, uh, but just you yeah, might. yeah. <laughs> but just joining in on their pro- just joining in on their process and seeing how they go through all that and then that last act really did deliver. Um, you know, it, I, everyone it, talks about the first the first scene of the movie. You know, yeah. And I, and, I, and I went in expecting like, okay, I was like this. All right, let's see. You know what I mean? And it was good. It was obviously it was a good scene, but I like that last scene more than the first scene for sure because there's all this build up. That, and that last scene yeah. is so terrifying. Uh, it, it's it pays it's off like all these things on. with these characters too. You know, you have the oh. person who is the the one who can speak different languages and kind of their Apple. failure, their failure when they're not able to like like you think, oh, this is a movie. They're going to run up at the last minute, save He'll him, figure it out. He'll figure it out. It. He's like, I can oh, do this, no. and then no, he doesn't. He has to go. He fails, and then the other um, soldier looks at him and says, you're not worth it, and just passes by him. Like there are all these huge character arc moments in that final act with it also being action and intense i mean it was it, it definitely top the stakes the stakes the st- were crazy because you want all of those characters to survive at that point point. and i thought steven well i thought as- tom hanks was going to survive you know what i mean like i thought uh they had this they had the scene when they had the shot where they had the, they zoomed in on the eyes of the old man and then they had a shot of the zoomed in of the eyes of Tom Hanks. And I was like, oh, they're trying to elude or make a parallel like nope. comparison. Like, nope, he died. Um, so, yeah, no, I don't know. I'm glad that I watched it. Definitely going to rewatch it again. Uh, again, yeah, yeah. not into war movies, but Luis, this one was was good. The One of the things that I was a little worried about, because you haven't seen it, right? Uh, and it's what a movie that, what, 20 years ago came out and then has since like kind of... Uh, become a staple like in like like traumatic war moments like the the camera you know what i mean it's like everything slows down and oh fucking explosions oh. in the background but you can't hear them and everything like that like that all came from saving private ryan yeah you, know you I mean? can you, i can see that for sure and even even though it's or, originating that there's still so much thought and yeah. direction being put behind it it's not like I mean, how people do it like now the next, where they're they're yeah. like imitating and they're doing half assed yes. Like, yes. you know, this in is, that moment, it was like, this was iconic. Even you know in I mean? the like, moment, there are so many choices that are being made by Spielberg 
that makes every second that you're watching it through your ears, through your eyes, through everything where you're enjoying it. And people just half ass recreate it now. And it's not as good as yeah. it was when he did it, you know? And so yeah. it, it was very effective for sure. Top. Top five. That's awesome. I was worried that you were going to just walk around being like, oh, okay, you know, it's over. I was I afraid know. of that too. I was no. like, you know, like I, the, the whole war movie being a tired kind of trope thing. Um, no. When I, me I, and Miguel knew, like, Saving Private Ryan started that shit kind of thing. Yes. Like, we even, knew that. Even, no, even going through years and years of all this, like, you know, of this type of influence that they've pulled from Steven Spielberg, it was still a good movie because the story is still there. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah there are mm-hmm. all these like visual tropes that people have pulled off with the shaky camera and all these things and the yeah. sound going out, but it's the story that still pulls you in. These care they give time to each character to kind of like incredible ensemble yeah. too, like great ensemble and people and not to say in a bad way, but people kind of dying at the right time. Like you know, it gives it kind of gave room for other people. To kind of showcase themselves and can i yeah. uh let me ask you this if if there is one okay what was like the most impactful death scene Moment. for you yeah Ooh, yeah mm. spoilers 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 um, 20 year old movie i mean oh, I it's guess been it... too long since he's watched it no 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 i mean i th- 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 you know what's going on in my mind is i'm actually going in between a lot of characters back and forth I'm going between the medic. I'm going between the guy who dies upstairs. I'm going also Tom Hanks. Uh, I think each of those characters I felt a real loss towards too. Oh, you know, man. I think the person upstairs as well. Um, I felt a real loss, and 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 you know they even filmed it where like you see the knife going through his heart and just man, everything is kind of built. fear, the fear yeah. of it, and, that and you and, and you're in invested in it as an audience member because you're really rooting for him to kind of overcome it. He has somebody there to overcome it and you have all these things and when it's let down and you see him like lose his life and you see him he was also the character who was like berating the nazis for being like hey yeah like i'm the jew and i fuck you and all these things mm-hmm. like he was kind of standing there's, up there's subtext to his death you know what exactly I mean? it's like, it's, and so it's not it's just so a person who's lost just, yeah yeah it's, it's like it's, he it's, died in an explosion or something no it's like a very personal thing is happening. Who's kind right of now. voicing the the pain of his like of, of all the people who are being persecuted as well, you know. And when he loses, it's like it hits hard, you know. Really hard, yeah. Um, I would say uh, probably him, and then and like I think just Tom Hanks is a surprise, but I, I think for him he kind of impacted me a bit. Yeah, no, that like I I watched this movie way too young, um, and that scene in particular, was extremely uh, visceral. You know, just uh, that, that, for me, it was very intimate. Was one of the heaviest. Very, so intimate, and like, such a, like, human struggle. Yes. Like, those guys were literally throwing everything at one another. Um, there's, a, there's another great bit where uh, Tom Sizemore's character, the sergeant, uh, he, like, faces uh, another soldier, and they both try to shoot at each other. The guns run out of yes. ammo or jam. And so they throw their helmets at one another. And then their pistols. And it's just like one thing after another. It's fucking tense shit. I, like, yeah, I rewatched it recently. I rewatched it before I watched my assigned movie. Um, <laughs> and, but yeah. I wonder that, why. That, that gets me every time. I mean, it's a fucking great movie. I, I'll say this. You guys are talking. I, I, it's, it's interesting to hear both of you say, like, that was the scene for you. My my scene for sure was the medic dying. Yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think I I cry every time that scene comes on. That's I mean, right. Yeah. The lead up to it is really good. Uh, it, it's oh. a really good moment where that's like the, the whole crew is like, why the fuck are we doing this like we don't want to do this and immediately one of them gets hurt and dies and the medic of all of them uh, yeah and the fact that he had just told that story about how like his mom would come home from work and like you know try to say goodnight to him or whatever and he would pretend he was asleep and then like as he's dying he's like shouting for his mother yeah and it's just like i don't know why oh it just kills me because it's like uh, and, and, and as a medic, he knows like, is it where is it? Where's the stabbing points? Where the oh, bullets? He's, yeah, and he's, he's like, like trying the to liver. direct them to it. Yeah, he's like in the liver, and, and he's like, like... and he know he knows before they know 
that he's screwed yeah. because he went through the level. And yeah. when they're just like, they just keep hitting him with like morphine too because they're just like, oh shit, like, just give it to him, give it to him, give yeah. It to him. yeah, give it, give all of it to him. Like, oh man, it's that scene kills me. On a technical level too, I mean, it looks so real. I guess. I mean, yeah, not obviously not ever having to see that kind of injury in real life, but like. On a technical level, that moment is just it, like it sold it, it for it, sure. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, it's not just like guys with a bunch of fake blood and shit like that. Like, it, yeah, a lot, like a lot of the grizzly stuff is just it, it's done so well on a technical level that again, like I feel like uh, one of the bigger problems with war movies today is now they're using CGI a lot more on like bullet injuries and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, especially on impact. So it basically just looks like paintballs hitting people, but this movie still, you feel the weight of the action going on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It feels very 2d cool. where it's just like, it looks like it's pasted on and you just kind of see like kind of these. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, ten out of ten, super great. Uh, had a great time with it. Didn't feel dated, and uh, I love how. Again, I was like, "Why are we saving him?" And then I was part of that experience with the crew. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nice. So, let's we did it. it. We, we did finally it. Yeah. saw it. I know. We saw I know. Saving Private Ryan. A random, a random choice, but it was really just because how many times I, we I talked love about. It. Yeah. You yeah. not seeing it? I said, I, "He's got to see it." You had More to put like a gun in my head to make it happen. Saving our buddy Luis. That's right. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about Deep Impact now. Okay, oh, let's boy. get into it. Okay, because <laughs> I saw it. Yeah, I think a two days ago or something. Okay, I just so want to say, hang on. What's... I just want to, I just want to say, I hey, wait, genuinely wait. like Deep Impact. Okay, I think it's a great movie. I think it's better than Armageddon. And okay. rewatching it, that was the whole reason I texted Ed that day. I was just like, I'm having such a good time watching this movie. It's so good. I want you to watch it. And uh, maybe he disagrees or agrees. I don't care. Let's hear. Oh, well, if you don't care, Miguel. No, um, I, no I care, but I just, I don't care. <laughs> I, I'm protecting myself. Well, for starters, I want to say that it wasn't for any kind of like, um, out of some blind loyalty to Armageddon, but I never saw Deep Impact. Um, it just happened to be one of those situations. I think, like, my dad came home with a pirate copy of Armageddon, and I watched it on my computer, and that's it. And that, I, I didn't even know ups- Deep Impact like existed until much later. I will um, say, a pirate copy on the computer that ups the cool factor by like ten points. You know what oh, I mean? Back in the nineties, I was come king. on, I was yeah. king. Um, so. Uh, with that, with that being said, I did watch it. I watched it last night, so it's very fresh on the brain. Okay. Um, I really. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> it's good. First, it's cool. My, no, no, no. My first reaction, honestly, a hundred percent, was a, it was a mixed bag for me. There okay. are a lot of there are a lot of elements that I liked about it, and I wish that they really like. I, I really wish they leaned into more kind of thing. Really, uh, I like. I wish that it had been more of a tragedy movie. I guess. Um, I it felt overall, it felt like they had cut a bunch of shit that left a lot of the characters feeling a little one dimensional. Um, I did like that it was kind of like a growing, uh, unlike uh, Armageddon, where it was just like, boom, here's the asteroid, and yeah, it's coming for Earth. Where's Bruce Willis? Uh, With this movie, it started off with this kind of like um, journalist investigation that developed into like like a scandal, but then all of a sudden, no, wait, it's it's a fucking apocalyptic uh, nightmare. And I dug that aspect to it. I like that slow build to it. Uh, and kind of like the, the reality that like a whole year had gone by after discovering the asteroid and essentially nothing had been done about it. Where the movie started losing me was when they actually started addressing the asteroid. Uh, the Tia Leone character, oh, uh, no. who's the, um, the journalist, who yeah. kind of uncovers it she turns into a zombie for the second half of the movie 
Wow. Um, okay. Morgan Freeman literally only comes out to make speeches. Uh, <laughs> Robert Robert Duvall just seems so out of place. And I mean, I guess maybe that was the point because yeah. his character is supposed to be out of place. Right. But like, he fell out of place. I was just like, why are you here, man? Um, the and I kind of <laughs> wish that they had actually failed the first time, like completely, uh, because it just felt. It almost felt like a studio push that they managed to split the asteroid in two and that, you know, even if they get hit by a lesser asteroid, Earth can survive, but we got to destroy the big one. So let's, let's, well, you know, I, do a U-turn. I, I, hold on, hold on. And I, I'm going to say, I, this, I will say this. Suicide, I suicide room. I will agree adding the more tragedy because when, when they played the tragedy up, which Armageddon didn't really have as much, Armageddon was right. fun. But this played a lot more right. like real life tragedy, and when they played that up, I was like, "Oh wow, this is interesting." How people I react. dug that bit, and because they split off the first asteroid, look, they were, the Earth wasn't going to blow up for sure. Like that's a studio choice. No, of course, of but course, they gave course. them chance for us to feel real stakes when that first broken asteroid. Yeah. Tay Leone fucking dies like in the she beginning. She dies like she like. We go through her the whole time, and then she's just gone, and she has final moment with her father, and that's the impact. Ed. The girls, what the girls' parents also goes through. Like there is a loss that happens, and so no, I think we, we, we gain something from that first broken piece. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Totally. I no, I I totally agree. Uh, there were um, Vanessa uh, Redgrave, um, who plays Tia Leone's mother. Oh right, uh, was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. I thought she was great. You know um, what, Ed? That that is the most fucking Ed ball ass <laughs> answer to this whole movie. Of course, a fucking course. The character that I'm not even thinking about right now <laughs> is the one that Ed is like, oh, she fucking nailed it. She not Taya Leone, who I fucking would leave my whole family for. Hold on, okay. She, okay, she was hosting as a news anchor. She became zombified. I was like, this is not a news anchor. There was... Uh, no, I was... love Tay Leone. I love... You You mentioned that at the beginning, like, her investigating this scoop and then, like, just stumbling into the whole thing. I loved that. I loved that she got kind of a push for it, and you want to be like, oh, fuck, she's, like, riding this wave to get her thing. Yeah. But then she's also, like, a good human being and, like, right, helps that mother her... and daughter. She right. gives up the seat. And she's nice. like, take my seat on the helicopter and just go. And sure. then, of all things, Ed, she's like reconnecting with her father. Okay, <laughs> that was shitty. And they and they die shitty. on the beach of their family beach house together. Okay, yeah. where well, and she leans into him and says, "Daddy," right before yeah. they fucking die. Sure. I thought I would sell Ed on this movie immediately, just on that alone. No, of course I'm... Well, way to manipulate my emotions. Well, next time you hashtag bit. girl dad me, all right? I just want to hear <laughs> nothing from you, okay? No, but that's the thing, is, like, because there was a lot going on in that, like, the second half of that movie, like, jumping across, like, you're going... You're going with the initial they, they mission. Do, they do branch out. All of a sudden, there's, like, there's pieces... And for a long period of time, too, it's not like back and forth, like checking in with characters and stuff. Like, you almost forget that her dad was a thing until, like, he comes back and he's like, oh, well, she left me. <laughs> you know what um, I kind of like about that, though, Ed, is, and I'm talking to you specifically now, you fuck, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> is I kind of like that it, this ensemble thing is like I'm, I'm watching someone now and then I come back and I watch someone and, like, time has advanced. Like sure. when we when we get together, things have happened since the last time we got together. You know what I mean? Of course. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I appreciated that it was like a, a bigger in scope. Whereas like Armageddon, and I'm going to talk about Armageddon obviously because it's like the they were neck and neck. Yeah. Uh, and I know that's the more popular movie. Uh, but Armageddon is very much like you know here's the action. You know what I mean? And I feel like Deep Impact was like here's the drama. You know? Yeah. Totally. We don't Absolutely. we don't need Aerosmith oh, to sing the, the song. Visuals, visuals, needless to say, were not great. Well, it's an old. Well, first off, it's an old movie. I mean, it's like well, a movie from the you. '90s. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, we I'm not asking. Firm, we have a firm grasp of the obvious. It is it's... an old movie. <laughs> <We> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miguel. Uh, but like the, it, it was. But it was moments I really enjoyed where I was just like, yeah. "Man, they're really like doing this like world elimination kind of shit." Like the committing uh, the to second it. time. 
their second plan where like as the asteroid got closer they sent a bunch of nukes at it and the next bit you see Morgan Freeman was like the missiles failed I was like, oh man, yeah, like, you, you kind of just, like, buckle yourself up. You know that, like, millions of people are going to try and get into these um, uh, cave or tunnels that they have uh, in whatever state, and, you know, it's like a million people only kind of thing. Um, no, there, there's, like, plenty of drama. I, it was, like, one of those movies where I was just like, man... Just want like thirty minutes more to really like because after that. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. No, yeah, I like. I wanted more from it. Like I guess. more. I, I appreciate yeah. that. And I wanted like uh, the asteroid hit, uh, and then there's just like not a whole lot of fallout from that. You know what I mean? The, like the ending scene is just like, oh well, the first thing we're gonna build is fucking the White Congress House. Okay. The White House. I'm right. just like, okay, All well, right. why not figure out figure out society or whatever you wanna? It's just, I, I just wanted it more fleshed out. And I know for a '90s uh, apocalyptic film, it's not gonna happen or whatever. But there are so many ideas in this that I really did like and was like into. Uh, and it's really just like a handful of things that I was just like, nah, I don't like it. Um, again, like I said, I, I just thought Robert Duvall was... Was just, he your was least like, favorite? Probably, yeah. I, I rolled my eyes every time he came up on screen. Wow. Um, I, I was just like, I could do without it. I just would rather see the crew fail and... Well, what about... Okay. And, and that's I, more I, realistic. I, I hear you. I hear you on that. Yeah. What did you think about the moment where they all like they're all like talking to their families at NASA or whatever? Yeah. And the and the mom with the baby comes running in and she gets to talk to the blind astronaut for one last. She time. was running late. Yeah. The yeah. the the guy who was like a, an asshole for saying the obvious that everybody was thinking is like why is Robert Duvall in this movie? Um, he yeah no that was a touching moment there were touching moments yeah you related uh, to that character huh Ed? Okay. when um <laughs> you know when elijah wood uh, i thought elijah wood's character too was kind of underdeveloped uh and his relationship with that he girl was a child, like, so. yeah no and i get it, like i i appreciated that they had that kind of build up at the end to where it's like man especially her parents who had to come on man that's a good moment tried to say goodbye to her twice kind of thing it, you know it's like the first time it's like we want you to go with him but she can't do it mm -hmm. and then he you know somehow manages to find them in all that traffic on a dirt it, bike it, it, it uh, you can't nice just suspend the disbelief ed I know, I know, I know, I know, but, you know, I just can't help it. Um, it it would have been nice to see Elijah Wood and her go through something together by themselves, like sort of a little more. Do you know what I mean? More. Like, okay, they, they I, I got the impression that they were just neighbor buddies kind of thing, like close friends. And then all of a sudden he was just like, well, let's get fucking married. And I was like, how old are you? Um, well, I you didn't... think back to you being 16 years old, Ed. Okay, the world's going to end. So and you're going to die I a virgin. That. Okay. <laughs> and the asteroid, the asteroid in question is named after you. You're like, uh, hello. <laughs> suck your dicky. Um, <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. I... There was that scene in the gymnasium, like shortly after the meteor uh, or asteroid was discovered. And there's that one punk kid who stands up in the audience. It's like you're gonna get so late now that you found this like yeah. world-ending asteroid. I was like, what is wrong with this country? Like, yeah, <laughs> where is no, that? No, they really there? captured. They really captured that that time frame. You know what I mean? Totally, absolutely. Um, but you know what? I didn't hate the experience. Like I said, I I was really really I... into it. Uh, in like just real in chunks. Yeah, like certain moments, and then it's more like when you know the I, the typical studio shit kicks in. You're just like, oh, okay, I know where this is going, kind of thing. I tell you, but what. like when the when the asteroid did hit that first one in the ocean, that that was like an impactful moment because at was, that oh, point, really you're just like this. thinking the waves really hit hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. you're thinking like, man, like that. All those oh, people know that up. they're about to die. You they're can run as fast as you can. But you're fucked, kind of but thing. But you can't yeah. catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. Right. Hell yeah, dude. S said Elijah Wood. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I think those are two of my favorite moments of that movie is when Taylor and her father are on the beach 
and the parents of uh, of the girlfriend whose name I'm blanking on right now, um, when they give away, first off, not only their firstborn daughter, they're like, the please go. You know what I mean? But they hand her the baby, and he goes, he's like, we're not even talking about it. Take this baby and go. Yeah, and man, then that... they just stand there, and they just are kind of like, and it's like a, I mean, I always say this, but like, I guess what it pulls on my heartstrings is like, like as a parent, like you want your yeah. kid to like thrive and succeed and like go out into the world. And like, what a more like w- the most literal interpretation of that, those feelings, you know what I mean? Like, totally. please survive, you know, I would. Yeah, no, I, it, that was totally devastating. I was like, I, I was just like, fuck, uh, when, uh, at the beginning when that, um, astronomer, like was trying to get that information mm. to whoever and gets in the car crash. I was like, oh shit. Oh shit. Um, so no, there were moments that really, really worked and I was on board for most of it. It was just like bits that kind of just took me out of it. And I want, I wanted something more, even though it's like a 20 odd year old movie. I, you know, I was just like, I, I would love to tell you what, I would love for this to be remade. And for them to just really go into it. No, I actually I would love that. Not. I would love that because I think the best movies to remake are the mo- re- movies that aren't great. Because then you can remake them into something that is great. Never remake something that is already good. Jurassic, Absolutely. Jurassic Park, for 100%. example. Do not 100%. try to remake that movie. Dante. I'm blown away that Luis just like s- subtly threw in there like movies that aren't great. Like I thought we were on the same page. Oh. I thought you were enjoying this. Movie. Okay, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. I did enjoy this movie. I'm not saying I did. I didn't say I did enjoy this but movie. But like, make it oh, like it's sorry. trash. I've had a whole. No, no, saving, I say Private Ryan. Ryan. saving Private Ryan. Saving Private I do want to say. I do want to say. Hang on. I hear the. I hear the point you're about to make. I do want to say that I appreciate that I gave these 20 year old movies, and they both on different ends of the spectrum. Okay, I didn't pick them. Going, these are two of the greatest movies of all time. Hi Ed, and. I, I think like one is obviously hands down better than the other. Okay. Yeah. And in the other one, Tom Hanks tries really hard. Okay. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> second, second time ago. Like, oh, shit. it's a call back. Back. Punch drunk nerd, the podcast. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> no. Hey, thank you for humoring me. You guys. I like, I, I just really wanted you guys to watch movies. You hadn't seen good for better or worse. Luis, that's for you. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I appreciate. It. You know what's funny is no, I was watching. You know what though? I am. Oh, no, go for it. Ed. No, Please, no, no. I'll talk. I tell you this. <laughs> I I know hands down one hundred percent for the rest of my life. I will never recommend a movie to Ed that he will like. That is just our relationship. That's not you know true, I mean? Miguel. No, Ed, don't say that. Ed, don't say that. That's gonna happen. Ed will always have a higher opinion of a movie than I will. You no. know what I mean? I don't believe that. And, and, and he'll apart be ready from, to, apart from to deep punch impact. it down. Apart from Deep Impact, what else are we talking here? Oh, man. Let's see. Uh, I was like, Ed, you got to watch uh, fucking uh, Minions. <laughs> and you were like, no, Miguel, it's not good. And I was kind of heartbroken about that. You know what I mean? No, I don't, no, I don't remember off the top like of my head. I feel yeah, like you're pulling out of your ass. Yeah. There's a movie out there. I'm sure there have been movies out there, Miguel, that I've watched on your behalf and loved. Lucky number slab. No, no, I think that was something Smoking we watched together. No, that, that was something else we watched together. Any good yeah. movie I've ever watched, I watched with Ed. But whose recommendation was it to go watch it, though? Always Ed's. That's what I'm saying. That's what Smoking I'm saying. Smoking aces. That was you, baby. Was it? Yeah. It was good though, Miguel. You it won the good. box office movie wager. I'm sure you're going to recommend Ed some, another badass movie coming up. Don't put good, yourself I have down, some good please. Interpretations. Yeah, yeah. You're with the universe. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you can feel the vibes. You know what's going to work. You know what's good. I tell you what, Luis, as the producer, do we have time to talk about a few more things, or are we running out of time? Oh, we're gonna, we can talk for four more hours. This we let's fucking we've go. Having, Welcome we, back. We've been, Welcome We've been back. having 20 minute mini episodes. We'll get ready to sit down for our. This is the long one, episode. baby. This is the long one. Okay. Uh, Ed, there's a couple things I want to talk about that I want to hear your opinion. But the thing that I want to hear the most about, and Luis, I don't know if you've seen it, so jump in if you have. I saw Gareth Edwards, the creator. I want to hear your. I want to hear your opinion. I haven't seen it. I want to hear opinions. All I want to say before we get into it is earlier in another episode, I said this. 
This was like one of my most anticipated movies of the year. I was so excited to see this movie, and I can't okay, wait to I talk wa- about I wanna it. Hear, I want to hear. I want to hear. I've heard yeah, so well, many now I want to hear your thoughts first. No, so I kind of want to hear Ed's first. Uh, now I want to hear yours. Tell now me. I want to hear yours, baby. Okay. All right. Listen. I want to say this, and I think, and I think this is an overhyped situation. Okay, like when you really hype yourself up for a good movie, which is kind of why I'm scared about some of these other movies I want to see later this year. Uh oh. <laughs> I did not quite enjoy the creator. Okay. I was a little let down. Uh, I wanted it to be a little more. Uh, I-, I wanted something a little more original or a little more creative. We were talking about this thing that's so big in the news right now, AI, right? Like, and how AI is going to take over the world. And this is the movie where fucking AI is a central theme of it. You know what I mean? These robots having life. And I kind of wanted us to like have a new interpretation of this story. And the way I walked away from it was like, oh, this was just kind of like a like a like by the numbers sci-fi kind of just told what, this story. Before. What do you mean by what do you mean by by the numbers? Like, is it is it a type of story where it's like a kid's in trouble, so someone just saves a kid, and in the end, the kid is saved? Is that what you mean, or what were you looking for? I mean, yeah, you kind of nailed that shit on the head there, Luis. Uh, a little yeah, bit. Okay. <laughs> only that's exactly what it is. The kid is like the uh, the target, as it were, or like a chosen not, one, or something like some sort of that, yeah, like the chosen one or the promised one for AI. Okay, the right. More, For me, the thing that was just like, oh, okay, I've seen this before, was basically the idea that a couple pairings, robots or humans, or like robots want to be like self individual beings. Was there was there was there like a human robot like uh, sort of like um, I don't know where they look down upon the the robot kind comparatively to humans. Wow, that's interesting was... you brought that up, Luis, cuz yes, that's like the whole idea is that <laughs> robots are looked down upon. They're just the helpers. And you see it through John David Washington's eyes. Did I say his name right? Uh um, Yeah. And uh where he is very like anti-robot. Like that's kind of his thing. And, and I just the, feel okay. like Yeah. Oh, and then of course at the end he goes, "Oh, I fucking love robots." And it's just like Okay, like I've just I've I feel like I've seen this in a couple different movies before, so it wasn't anything new. And as far as like the world it was setting up, that was interesting, but because they were so focused on hitting every beat of this story, mm-hmm. I, I just felt like I got I, I wanted to see more of the world. And the other thing was the I don't know how Ed feels about it, but another thing was like the pace. Like they were very much like, and we're going. Okay, here's the scene. 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 How long was the movie? Uh, it was like two, uh, two hours like and 10 15 minutes 15 or something. 10, yeah. Yeah. 15, yeah. Was there right okay. around there. So, Don't, so it's so not too question, long, but, but my next question is, is, was there a lot of action sequences? Yes. Was there yes, just a lot but, of like 10 minute, 15 minute action sequences, but like nothing them running, that I've them running away from something of them being chased at nothing. And I, and I feel bad going first Ed, cause I'm, I'm not trying to shit on this movie, but nothing that made me feel like, I'm so engaged right now. Like I can't look away. You but it's just I mean? like we're we're hitting an action piece for ten minutes, we're, and then we're, we're doing... shooting. Yes, yeah, we're shooting the robots. The robots are shooting at us. The other thing is, is they just they just kind of like briefly go over the conflict, and then everything is from the humans' point of view from their point on. Whether it be John David Washington or the surprise for me, one of the bad guys in this movie is um, Jamie Lee Curtis. Wilson. Uh, is it Jamie Lee no. Curtis? Not Jamie Lee no. Curtis. Um, uh, fuck. Uh, uh, Allison fuck. Janney. Allison, Allison Janney. Janney. Oh, Allison okay. Janney is one of the bad guys. And it's like, she's very tropey. She's super tropey. Uh, but it's fun because like I've never seen a bad Allison Janney performance. performance. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. I love her. So even though it's like very by the numbers and she but she showed up to work you know what i mean she's she chewing that, she's chewing that scenery yeah you know? oh my god what a beautiful example of chewing scenery like that could yeah. not be any more apt for this yeah um, totally listen i don't want to over talk it i i didn't hate the movie i think really because i just walked away just going like okay that was a movie there was a lot you of know, potential like, you saw into it that wasn't explored yeah that i wanted you. you just wanted more yeah. From the yeah. trailer, it kind of gave a lot of vibes and moods that you were like, "Let mm-hmm. me explore that. Let me see that," and it just went to the route of, "I will save a talking... child." That let's save a child, yeah, because we're well, humans against robots, and in the on, end, man. robots are good, kind of thing. I yeah. mean, you can think of any any sci fi example of a human and child. 
uh, I'm sorry, adult and child, but I mean, just more recently we saw The Last of Us. Okay, not only did I see the show, I played the right. game. You know what I mean? Terminator. There's the adult and child. Uh, Mandalorian. Fucking, yeah, obviously the Mandalorian. You knew I was going to say that. And I just, I was like, oh, okay, like we've seen this. And there's like some heartwarming moments, but because I think a little bit because of the pace we were moving so quickly, I never felt like connected enough. Like I, I never know, got to sit in with what it. I, it seems like a situation where as far as pacing goes, it's like we don't have a lot of, like I haven't seen the movie, but we like we have a lot of story or depth or we're just trying to move forward. We have a lot of cool action sequences. If we can't engage them story wise, let's engage them pace wise, so that as we keep going, we're just kind of like on this momentum, on this momentum. So you're not really thinking about it. Mm. It's kind of the vibe that I'm getting from you. My follow up question is, um, visually speaking, framing wise, was there moments where we got to sit and and enjoy that, or were also things kind of like pushed through? Like, was that not even? I don't. I, I've given a lot of opinions. I don't want to over talk it. It seems like Ed I, the, has something the, to say about it. The positive thing for me was the visuals. I thought it looked really good. I was in. I the it was 100%. a visual because so the director the director Gareth, comes from a very vis, he, he he was a VFX yeah. supervisor. Like he he comes from visuals, so I imagine like he's able to nail yeah. the mood and the tone of that very well. Yes, totally. Uh, like yeah, I've listened to uh, some interviews with Gareth Edwards regarding this movie. And he kind of did it in a similar fashion that he did Rogue One and that he shot a lot of things kind of guerrilla style, uh, right. just like getting raw footage and then and then putting in uh, like visual effects and visual uh, architecture and spaceships and stuff like that. You, like, you imposed, feel that. Yeah, imposed on the natural landscape. So you still feel like, yes, this is the world we're living in, in the future. It's not just like, you know, it's not like a bunch uh, of green screens or whatever. Which I think think his approach, like he did Godzilla too, right? Like, Mm -hmm. uh, I think his approach of doing that is tremendous and the way that it should be done. Where it's like, it pays off. It it, looks fantastic. It feels very real. Do you know what I mean? And then he adds on it. It it lived in it instead of like, let's film it in front of a green screen and keep it shaped like we know we're going to add all these visual um, effects like no it's like a green yeah. screen stage and they add a couple like fucking plants you know what i yeah. mean it, a it green screen like stage that. add it's a couple not. plants and then maybe let's add a camera shake in post no we're gonna do that at the right. beginning no, no. and then at the end we're going to uh, right mm-hmm. yeah it's vice versa and he like it, there was one technique that i uh, really enjoyed uh just kind of like you know, uh, as far as taking the story in, but just kind of watching people act. Um, he said that they got to a point in production where, you know, if they had a- extras on set, he wouldn't tell them if they were going to be human or AI mm-hmm. during the, you know, during the shoot so that they act more naturally, which is like, you know, the point. Of- that makes so much sense there were so many shots i'm sorry i don't mean to talk over you yet yeah. but there's just there's so many moments where i was kind of surprised that the robot was acting so human you know what i mean yeah uh and it was like like why would you program the robot to do that but that kind of makes exactly. sense that that's the I, I, actor doing I, I, that i think there's a i think we have a uh, like a, there's a epidemic where people like actors and performers currently in general and because their audiences want it but that they showcase instead of actually be it so if I say you are a robot, then they have to right. signify that. They have to showcase it, like, oh, they, I'm a I robot. Am a robot. You know what I mean? It has to be like a stiffness to it, or yes, something. And it, yeah, and it's like we don't need to be showcased that anymore. And I feel like that's a very modern problem right now, that's where we, we are getting like, yeah. oh, I'm lying to you. I'm lying right now. I'm lying. <laughs> yeah, like, don't yeah. don't show me that. Just like act like you're telling the truth do you know what i'm saying and yeah, exactly, exactly exactly you don't have to like sh- signify tell it. tell what you believe is the truth kind of thing yes. like not the yeah no so to that effect it's just like i feel like technically this movie is sound like gareth edwards is visually a very strong mm-hmm. director i think that the problem with this movie is that it needed just it needed to be, uh, you know, developed more. I think, like, to everything Miguel said, yeah, it was, there was a lot of, you know, kind of, mm. uh, you know, a lot of just by the numbers as far as that kind of storyline where it's like a guy 
and a child and whatever. Um, but there, there were a lot of moments that I enjoyed, and then there are a lot of moments that kind of fell flat. Um, like I think they established the world pretty well, but the the pacing, like Miguel said, just felt off to me. Uh, they didn't slow down when they needed to slow down and they didn't speed it up when they needed to speed it up kind of thing, uh, to move along. Um, the, I will say like the, the ending, uh, the kind of like finale sequence, uh, had me emotionally invested. I feel like there were ways that they could have even made it better. Yeah. Uh, I, if anything, it was like one of those things like in deep impact, it's like the, child and the father kind of thing uh just that kind of relationship that they developed and to john david washington's uh credit i thought he played it very well but like there are some character uh you know points towards the end where it's just like ah, man that, that could have been great but it wasn't developed enough um i agree 100 percent. i think i know what ed's talking about you talk about in the field on the space yeah. station there yes yeah. exactly yeah, yeah um i will say uh to her credit i thought uh madeline yuna voiles who the plays child? The, the child i thought she was fantastic 10 out of 10 she nailed it dude i she was really I, good i really enjoyed her performance i was kind of blown away because there were some moments where like and i i'm always kind of i try not to be critical of like child actors because they're children you know but the, you know sometimes they can kind of like uh, they can make away, or break a movie they, like this. They can this. make or break the moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. But she just did such a good job. Like I was really surprised at like when she was sad, I felt sad. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and it felt believable the way she was yeah. reacting to moments. And um, to the to the to the ending, uh, like the literally the closing shot, I thought was a beautiful shot. It's just her. Oh, that was a great. It's kind of yeah. like. They're, this movie is full of like really great moments and great concepts. It Con- just doesn't. It just doesn't yes. tie itself together fully. And so, it, because they try, they just kind of. They've got this beautiful world. They've got this, you know, intriguing, uh, you know, concept. But it just like they do the straight and narrow, mm-hmm. like storyline from A to B. That kind of just diminishes it a little bit and there are some bits where you're just like why like why are we doing that why do we have to see that again or whatever like there's a fight right in the middle where the uh so basically it's like the uh americans versus new asia slash ai land because like the ai uh supposedly set off a nuclear weapon in Los Angeles in America. And so from there, they banned AI in the country. In in America specifically. Right. In America specifically. And then the, uh, like Asia, which they call new Asia, they keep using AI. And Mm -hmm. so that, that what, that's what Uh, the war is about. Um, so I, I, it's I see like, how that concept alone, like you want to learn a little bit more about that. It's like, how does that yeah. exactly. reflect well, on its characters? But then you don't have an opportunity to spend time with that. You're like, we have exactly. to feed this, this kind We're of moving like, forward, move forward yeah. plot. It's like, listen, we have time to breathe. I mean, and this yeah. movie was what? Two yeah. hours and 15 minutes, two fifteen, two fifteen, 2 15. Yeah. And I would say like maybe 15 minutes of action sequences maybe three times throughout so really you're you're having like an hour and a half movie where you're just kind of going beat to beat to beat and this yeah. movie should have been two hours and 45 minutes where you can I, have I know time it's, to i know explore. it's dumb. I think, miguel says yeah. it all the time but i feel like it could have been like a you know a little series. mini series or tv show not something that needs to be drug mm-hmm. out you know what i mean apple tv plus yeah, but, of course I mean, yes just a little bit more um i was kind of the way they talk about how the they they so casually mention like two thirds into the movie, oh the real reason that bomb went off was because of this, and yeah. then they don't talk about it, it ever again. It was almost like a throwaway line, and it was like okay, but that is like the heart of the whole drama is that this happened, yeah, and and they go no, let's just focus on the 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 dad kid vibe. And it's like, okay, well, I appreciate that aspect, but also it's like, this was like, if a nuclear bomb went off right outside my window right now, 
I would hope that you guys would be like, what the fuck happened? Like, yeah. why did that happen? Let's explore that situation. Yeah. And they were just kind of like, oh, it happened because of this. Eh, yeah. Let's, mm. let's move on. And I thought that was no, a bit of a letdown. Major, yeah, major dramatic revelations were kind of undercut by something else, like mm -hmm. by more action, if anything. Mm -hmm. Like, just to keep the, again, keep the plot moving forward. It's just like, oh, suddenly the bad guy showed up, so we have to go deal with this and oh, detract right. from the emotional through line that's going on over here. Um, it did, but I, I do want to give it, like, credit for, like, certain elements. Like, there were things that were shocking. Um, like, there was uh, the, even though the U.S. banned... AI, they were using like suicide bomber droids essentially oh, yeah, in fights. I thought that was like intense. There, uh, there was a scene where one AI got uh, killed, I guess, and so Alice and Janney's character took their memory stick and planted it in another AI so that she could get like the last. Uh, like report or whatever the last few moments of their life but like that AI is trying to react to being dead and then alive again kind of thing it's just like freaky like there are some that, elements that they really could have played yes. with and leaned into yes they have a couple of good scenes where the robots react in a human way and a human goes whoa that was kind of intense right and they're instead of like exploring how they feel they just go yeah and then they move on yeah uh, i mean it's I like think th again it was uh i don't know but it just needed some more work it, the idea was there yeah and it just oh. needed a few visually again striking like the fact that they got to do this on an 80 million dollar budget is insane right um Which in is my a benefit mind, because like, as far as the visuals you, go you can't really make movies at that budget these days so like as a victory that's incredible they were do they were able to make incredible visual yes. art but i think it, what it felt like to me what it feels like to me is someone who is afraid to like listen this is a new idea we're afraid to go all the way we have to kind of do conventional things to make sure audiences yes. come back you know and yes. so there's there is a fear but i don't want to but there's a fear of that because it's like everyone wants something familiar everyone wants something, that ip and creator is like a brand new ip do you really take a but risk? That's the thing that people start complaining about too. It's yeah, just no, like, oh well, I've seen percent. it before. Like, percent, look at us yeah. here now. But yeah, a visually very striking film. It just doesn't hit the mark. Uh, so, so script wise story. and pace wise is kind of is kind of weird. Yeah. that was where. Yeah, I, I do want to say a couple of things. Performance, that I did. Pacing like, really performance, through. performance and visuals seems like to be it did really well. It was the story where we went to expand and then pacing. To, to the, to see and that. concept like con conceptually it was there it had a lot of things that i liked uh it yeah. just moved through um i do i loved a couple different things i loved the big ass robot ship in the sky uh it, it's like this big military vessel that is like in a death low star earth, if you low will. it is death star ish yeah it's in low earth orbit and the way they like project that beam onto the ground yeah. to like uh to hone in you know what i mean and it felt like a presence i did get that vibe that i could look up into the sky and see that thing and know that I, my life could be over in a second if they if they decide to and i yeah. think that was very impactful i was i was scared every time i saw that thing um i liked also the aspect of seeing it from like the child robot's point of view she was in that that room watching an anime of of people attacking that robot thing and destroying it kind of like just like manipulating her into thinking my whole life goal is destroying this robot thing in the sky uh, yeah. i keep saying robot it's not a robot it's a spaceship um i the visual it was crispy i'll tell you what man it looked really good okay day scenes night scenes i was hooked it looked which, beautiful. which actually i was watching a youtube video about this and I wanted to share it with some of my DP friends, but like the type of cameras and technology they were using weren't like, okay. So there's this brand called Ari Alexas that are like kind of the go-to for cameras. You know what I mean? Uh, and if you want a good looking show, you have that, but they're able to use some Sony cameras, which is very good with low lights. And 
basically from this YouTube video where they're like, hey, you don't really have to use these high-end cameras. Like they were able to utilize these kind of like prosumer cameras to kind of nail the look that we wanted to. And it's just, I don't know. It's very cool. And it's nice to hear that like, listen, there is room for a mid-budget movies. And we're here trying to make a hundred, two hundred million dollar movies totally. and have to make a billion to survive. And it's like there is a there is a future where we can make 18, Smaller five, movies. 10 million movies with new concepts. And especially, I think, with Marvel kind of like, I don't know, I, I, and like I'm a Marvel boy myself, where things are kind of going on the down end and you have people, we're talking about Scorsese, like his movies coming up and, and like all of these creative, you, uh, poor things is coming up. We're getting, you know, uh, um, Bo is Afraid. I'm just saying there's all these independent movies. You hit the 18 million you get new stories. I feel like people are going to want to go away from that blockbuster-esque and want something more real. And the fact that you can capture really good visuals with these lower-end prosumer cameras, like yeah. I think that's very hopeful. And hopefully yeah. that we get to see a little bit more of that. In, yeah, and it's not shot on the volume. It's like just real yeah. location. But mm -hmm. give it so much more so much more gravity when you're many, watching those moments how many times uh, do we say we want that for movies you know what i mean yeah. and, it, and so like the fact that and, I'm being and they always, and they always say it, like oh it's too expensive no, but, but that's no, the but thing look. it's just like they i think the creator is successful in, in that, that achievement in the visual yeah. achievement i think I it has a again it's more concept than you know the final product unfortunately but it's not it, i didn't hate it coming out of it i definitely uh sobbed a little, or just cried a little bit at the end like no I, sobbed it's okay I, I was moved i it was the actors did their best with what they had right ken watanabe was unfortunately misused misused um, oh my god but I, I mean every I guess time I, at there. first i th there was a moment where i genuinely thought his character was dead and then next scene he was back he was there with yeah. no with no nothing yeah I, yeah that was a tough one to swallow so i like and here's the thing is like the the frustrating thing is studios will look at this and just assume like oh well you know that was a misfire it didn't make enough money it wasn't worth the gamble well, quote unquote it but it's an interesting visuals, time because we have if this at least I mean, gets sorry. if this at least gets like a visual it. nomination right then i think that'll be justice for it like i think that'll be proof enough that these movies can be made on a smaller budget like i think maybe what hurt this movie the most on top of what we've talked about is like the marketing wasn't very strong but marketing is also very expensive um Killers of the Flower Moon, we've talked about it a few times this episode. That movie, which is like a period piece movie, is a $200 million budgeted movie. Mm -hmm. Like, which is kind of crazy. It, you know, in the contrast of this it, and that. Yeah. Uh, it's like, that's a costume drama. This is a sci fi, you know, epic, if you will, for lack of a better word. But like, I don't know. It's it, it's it makes for an interesting conversation, and hopefully, like studios won't just be like, "Oh well, that one flopped, so we're not going to make it like that again." And I don't want Gareth Edwards to be kind of cast aside either, because I think again, he's visually a very interesting director. Maybe he just needs a better screenwriter. Totally. I mean, I I went and saw this movie. Not only did the trailer look good, but it looked like. <laughs> Uh, Rogue One, which was one of my favorite Star Wars movies. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, obviously, he did that one. And I, so I want him to keep doing these movies. I just want them to be a little... And I thought Godzilla, the first Godzilla, was visually really striking. I I really enjoyed the first Godzilla. Uh, I know it's not for everyone, but... Luis! Yeah. I have you a question. Won. I have a question. Sorry. When you watched the trailer for The Creator um, and you were excited for it, what was it that made you? I can't wait to see this in the movie that you didn't okay. get in this movie. Do you know what I mean? Well, like, well, first off, the thing that made me was the look. It looked for a sci fi movie, it didn't feel like the green screen. So we just talked about how, I mean, Ed made a good point. It wasn't on the volume, it was in location. He made a really good point. That pulls about you how in. That they shot it and then they put the, 
CGI okay. in. You know what I mean? Uh, it looked like a sci-fi movie that I wanted to like touch and feel and be yeah. a part of. Um, the story itself, I like, okay. So like the man and the child, I was like, okay, that could be a little formulaic, but because of the general, the overall AI theme of it, maybe now it's going to be amazing. And now it's kind of more me. of the AI. Aspect I was like, oh, we've got potential for really good, mm. um, new drama. And it, I would, then I was just kind of what, like, what, like, I what new, you were kind of like, oh, I'm going to be getting new insight on AI and how it could make an impact in our society. I would love to see that in a movie. How well, that's right portrayed. now, I mean, we're talking about the strikes recently. It's like AI is bad. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we don't want AI taking over. Uh, and it's a different it's like uh, how many how many robot movies have we seen where they're the maid or the server or whatever and then they attack and then you go oh fucking robots are the bad guys and it's like we just kind of saw this movie again in this like mm. yeah it, I, i've seen i robot you know what i mean right, yeah, i've exactly. seen think about i robot yeah i, well, I do seen appreciate bicentennial one, man man I, yeah i do appreciate in this one that uh they didn't expand on this idea, but it was established that it was more of a gray area. Like people, mm. people fell in love with the AI, and uh, while you can still tell them, they were still, you know, like to a T human. You know, essentially, uh, in essence, you know, just like uh, for instance, uh, John David Washington has a friend who like, they're in the military together or whatever, like, at the beginning, and then later on he meets meets him up, and oh, he he was a soldier, but then he now lives in New Asia, and he's actually working with AI, and he has an AI partner, and stuff like that. It's Talk about pacing issues, though. I, yeah. as an audience member, had to really fill in a lot of blanks from the yeah. last time we saw him to the next time we saw him. And all of a sudden, he's kind of a different character. Uh, yeah. And they even give you like this little halfway scene where they go, no, remember, he doesn't like robots. But the next time we see him, he's like in a full-fledged relationship with one. Uh, and I, that was those moments where I was like, oh, man, this could be it. Like, think about the, um, oh, man, I'm blanking on their names. But from The I, Last of Us, uh, Frank and Bill episode. Yeah where you learned about these characters for the entire episode and hardly anything else around the real world happened because you were just focused on them. And it's like, what we just missed a whole chunk of this kid's story. Yeah. Uh, and all of a sudden I just have to kind of be on board mm. because the last time you see that character, he's getting the shit beat out of him by a robot. Why would he want to enjoy robots? Why would he feel empathy towards them? And that, and that seems why like would a he not why... want to just, that seems like a reason why you'd want this to be kind of a TV show. Is is kind of I'm hearing. Yes, it's like, just like let's, you, let's you, flesh you some want of these that, people you out. You want an them. episode yeah. where they're just like, let me just hear their story for a second without it yeah. kind of interrupting. There are sequences that they could have just like gotten rid of. Like there were a lot of moments of transition or exposition where it's just like we didn't need that mm. told that way or that directly or indirectly. It's just Man. like. There was a lot of cutting back and forth between uh, our main character, John David Washington, and then Alice and Janney's character, too. Mm. And it's like what Miguel was saying, they really, really drove home her character. Like, you knew who she was the moment you meet her. Yeah. But Who's they keep going back. Yeah, just like the bad military badass, you know, who's, you know, takes you know, American, takes right? names and yeah, American. Yeah. America is basically the bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Have uh, no sympathy. Well, they have a really good, there's a really good line when they first show up into new Asia and she tells them like, they don't care about what happened in Los Angeles. Like they see this as something different. I kind of enjoyed that line because it was like, if you like John David Washington's character was impacted by that bomb in Los Angeles. Okay. Uh, but these people half a world away, they were not a part of it. They do not care about those <laughs> things that happened and you coming in and dominating their land or fighting them or this and that, you know, that means something different to them, but yeah. we didn't really expand upon any of that. Right. Like, it totally. was just like, you get it. And you're like, well, yeah, I get it, but can we talk about it a little bit more? Yeah. You know? Like, I get it because you're telling me. Yeah, that's it, and that's the and like, 
but, but they don't give you really that kind of opportunity to dwell on that more. It's no. just it's more directly told to you instead of a feeling. I guess but, for me, I, I was just let down. I was a little let yeah. down about this movie. I, I I feel like I I'd feel like I'm like Daredevil. Right, I feel like I'm Daredevil right now in the sense where like I haven't seen the movie, but I have a yeah. really good construct. Because you're blind. Co- co- yeah, I'm blind because I'm blind. Because I, I have a good construct of this movie, and uh, I guess I'll just wait for it to come on streaming whenever I'm drunk, and I'm like, you know what? I just want to watch like a movie that's like not good. Come I on. I'll tell you this, Luis. Because it's a and visual like experience. Be, Do you know what I'm saying? I don't like, like to be this it bold. seems like it seems like a visual experience where you can kind yeah. of enjoy. I wouldn't call that concept movie. and lore. No. Yeah, but but it's, also, it's but it's also a good movie where world building. But it's also it's a movie good. where you're auto just like auto cruising a little bit. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like you're auto cruising where like the thoughts of like, listen, I know where we're going next, but what's happening is very beautiful. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Totally. I think I think you'll feel the same way we do, honestly, at the end of that movie. So I feel pretty confident about that. <laughs> We talked a lot about the creator. Uh, listen, before we talk about Sorry, other stuff, Oof. no, I love it. I'm, I, I, this is a really great exercise of just kind of me asking questions and seeing how, you know, being able to predict what's happening. I want to talk about Wes Anderson for a second. Um, Let's do it. Wes Anderson came out with four new shorts uh, probably like a week ago, I think. And I'm, I don't know if any of you all saw it, but I saw all four shorts uh one was released one day and then the day after another one a day after another one for a week the first short was 40 minutes long and the following three shorts were 20 minutes long they had to do with uh rolled dolls shorts themselves and um each story was an anthology so it would it would uh kind of recap or do a different story of rolled dolls story his famous obviously being bfg the big uh what is friendly big, giant? Friendly, thank you, friendly. The big fucking Jesus. giant. That's not right. That big fat giant. <laughs> uh, a BFG, also one of Spielberg's uh, not greatest movies. Uh, but yes, fantastic Roald Mr. Fox. Fantastic. Oh, fantastic Mr. Fox. Of course. So already had. He already has a liking towards Roald Dahl. Um, I watched the shorts and uh, listen. I'm telling you, uh, Wes Anderson has entered into a new phase of his filmmaking. Uh, we've we started to see it with. Um, What's it called? Uh, the French Dispatch. The fr- thank you, Ed. I love you. The French Dispatch. Ed, baby. And well, we had the- this conversation a few months no, ago. Exactly. No, <laughs> and, and the French Dispatch, and then also Asteroid City. And, yeah. and now we're seeing um, this in full-fledged with his Wes Anderson shorts. And the concept well, that he's... Shorts. Yeah, exactly. And what's happening here is it's storybook telling come to life. And if you watch it, Characters will basically read it as if they're reading a book, um, but sometimes when they are explaining something that happens in the story, um, they don't show it on camera. So they'll say, a man grabs a snake, the snake eats a mongoose, the mongoose does this. Even in the video, even in the, in the short, they won't showcase that. They'll just kind of like narrate it to you as if I'm talking to you. So Miguel, if you're telling a story to your child, imagine you're reading a book and you're reading this uh, story to your child. It is a mix of storytelling with theater work, but not showcasing it entirely. So mm-hmm. what's really cool about it is it leaves a lot of room for imagination. And it also, um, I don't know, it kind of puts the artifice of movie making in the forefront. It's like, this isn't real. This isn't, ha- this isn't a reality, but I'm going to showcase it to you entirely. So someone's walking in a scene, like say I'm, dr- I'm walking or I'm driving in a scene. You clearly see that I'm in green screen or in a background, there's a wallpaper in the background, but it's used to kind of push a story forward. And once you watch these shorts, you'll realize like, oh, Wes Anderson is entering into a new place where reality is not a situation like that. It's all fake. And what we're doing is fake. And there are stories within stories within stories, but the themes are true. And that's what I think is interesting is like the presentation is fake the actors are acting in maybe not a real real way but the concepts and the emotions are true uh listen check it out i think it's a good time 40 minutes for the first one and then the rest are only 20 minutes it's very short you can have lunch and enjoy one of these Wes anderson movies yeah. it's definitely a new I'm, phase that he's in so it's you know yeah i'm all for him doing more roll down material um I am waiting to get my Netflix fired up before I can watch these. And obviously, at the end of the month, we have uh, the 
uh, fired up. What do you mean? It. What do you mean by fired up? What do you mean? Like, well, you because fired up uh, we were all we were on my sister's account, and then that is gone. So okay. I need. I just haven't gotten around to starting up oh, a new okay. account. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, like David Finch's uh, "The Killer" coming out at the end of the month, uh, and then this as well, uh, on top of other things. Um, so I, 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 I'm excited to see these. I've heard nothing but good things. It really solidifies him and his new kind of direction and phase. I, yeah. I don't know. I just, I really feel like this is a new, the same as like. Do you like it though? I do. Do you like really this do. face? Yeah. And, and it, makes I, me wanna, it makes me want to rewatch um, Asteroid City a little bit. Yeah. The, I rewatched that too. I, I, that was fun. I think that it just introduces a new concept of like, listen, what we're doing isn't real. But what we're trying to say is like that that's what matters. Like the themes and the symbolism is is still effective even though everything is artifice. And I think that's interesting. Yeah. Um Wes Anderson. Totally. Check it out. Good guy. On Netflix. Another thing on Netflix is uh <laughs> No, no. <laughs> what do you mean no? No, I was gonna I was gonna hold we're get, we're running long. I would like to hold my I, next I, one. Oh. Cause I'm not done with it yet, and, I, and I'll be I'll be done I'll be done uh, closer, and I'm it. about to. I know I'm about. I let me preview it, but let me just say this: I, I'm uh, almost what I think is maybe going to be the next. The best episode is coming up next. I don't know; it's the longest one. <laughs> yeah, so I know. So uh, I'm hyped about it. So I don't want to give too much the, away, but I just tell the season. Tell tell what show you're talking about, because I. <laughs> uh, yeah, let me make it clear to everyone else who can't read our it notes. Is, Miguel uh, has been watching Paw Patrol, and it's fucking yeah, that's wild. right. The way fucking Marshall shows up in that bitch with a fire truck, you guys wouldn't even know. You wouldn't even go, know. Lu- no, Luis, Luis doesn't even get this content right now. Okay, so uh, I am. Uh, <laughs> I I've been given a lot of flack recently because I'm anti Netflix, but I'm hopping on Netflix recently. Okay, uh, it's it's spooky season. I'm gonna go ahead and just say it right now. We got exactly one season and then four episodes into season two of Lost. And Kristen goes, I'm a little burnt out. We got to watch something else. And I was like, motherfucker. Okay. So she was like, let's watch something spooky. And I said, okay, well, everyone talks about this one show. Let's do it. Okay. Which is, can you say the name? Say the name. I'm on Netflix and I'm watching The Haunting of Hill House. Okay. Let's go. All right. I've I've watched that show twice. I'll say this, and I could see I'm gonna get why. Sarah to watch it this uh, this Christmas. This, this Halloween. Christmas, <laughs> Father Christmas has brought us this spooky tale. <laughs> I uh, I'm finally watching Haunting of Hill House. Listen, I've, I I remember when it first came out. Ed was uh, Ed, and uh, shout out Mike Lindauer. Both of you guys were talking about it. Uh, I, I listen. Good. I don't do spooky seasons. I don't do spooky season too good. Uh, oh God. Oh man, mother. Uh, the Haunting of Hill House. Obviously, every year, uh, Mike Flanagan makes a lot of movies on Netflix, um, and this was kind of his first his first way into it. Haunting of Hill House. Then he did Haunting of Bly Manor, and then he did Midnight Mass. But Miguel, you're Ooh. doing Haunting of Hill House. I, Hill House. And like I said, I don't do Spooky Season too good. Okay, uh, but you know, I I was talked into American Horror Story, so I said, okay, I can do it like a serialized TV spooky right. season. I watched the first episode and I was immediately hooked. This is so different than that. Yeah. This is good. Yeah. This is Netflix version of American Horror Story, but it's not Ryan Murphy. Dude, are you in episode four? You have so much more good shit coming up. No, no, no. I do. No, no, I do. I do. Like, I'm looking forward to it. And that's why I didn't want to talk about it today because I was like, oh, okay, I'm not quite finished. I just wanted to let everyone know I've started it. Okay, uh, and uh, and I'm looking forward I, to it. I Midnight is Mass is a really good Dude, one. Dude, but... don't yes, that don't was going to be my second me. one, Ed. I'm sorry, I was going to say sorry. This no, no, no. I, I Haunting Hill House, and then Midnight Mass, and then I would say Haunting a Blind Manor, and then don't watch Midnight Club. But like, well, those... what blew my mind is that the sequel Haunting of Bly Manor is like relatively. <laughs> I'm getting liked all of a sudden. I don't know what why that happened. Well, how did how that, did that happen? happen? <laughs> did you do that, Ed? No, I don't know what that uh, was. Not intentionally. Wait, what do you mean not intentionally? All of a sudden, all of a sudden, a I got bubbles, a thumbs right? up in what I was saying. Yeah, what the fuck? Shout out Riverside. <laughs> okay. No, I uh, no, I uh, I was surprised <laughs> that the sequel Bly Manor was actually getting uh, some good reviews. So now I'm kind of like, okay, I'll finish this one and watch the next one. I look, uh, I think. 
I think, and I don't know if Ed thinks this. Yes, Blind Manor is is a good show, and I think there's a lot of merit to it. But, but Hill for, House is better. N- what I would say is, for diversity speaking, and just for contrast, I think you should do Hill House, Midnight Mass, and then Blind Manor. Okay. And I don't know Done. how Ed feels if about that. You go into Blind. No, I agree a hundred percent. Because you you're gonna inevitably go into Blind Manor thinking that it's gonna be. Equal to Hill yes, House, exactly, and it's not. Got it. Got it's it. Much, it's much. It's a way slower tempo. It's a different. Um, it's a different taste in okay. your palate, so that when you go to Blind Manor, you're like, "I'm ready for this again." And you, got it. and got it's it. a different. But do not watch the Midnight okay. Club. Do not. Okay. All right. Can I tell you about? The, I'm only three episodes in. Can I tell you about the few things that I've really liked and some of the things that have kind of drawn me into the show so far? Yeah. And then I, I'll be happy to talk about. I, I'll, I'll be done by the next time we talk about it. Okay. Yep. Okay. So. The jump scares in this show are not <laughs> typical jump scares. You know what I mean? You better there's be looking so, in the background, baby. What there's, is happening? There are things. Uh, thank you, Ed. Thank you. <laughs> there are things that are happening that the, the, the and the oh the way the blocking or I don't. I, yes. Luis, tell me if I'm saying it wrong. No, you're right. You're but right. The way it draws my eye mm-hmm. to it, as opposed to it just popping out and scaring yes. me. Um, there was that shot where. He, uh, the dad wakes up in the present time and Nelly is calling him, telling him that the bent, the bent neck lady is back and he sits up immediately. They have this very intense conversation. Okay, go, go to so-and-so's house. I'll meet you there. I'm getting up right now. And he turns on the light in his closet and just the baggage, just the, the Mm -hmm. luggage sitting on the top shelf Mm -hmm. gives you a little bit of a scare because you're like, what's coming at me? Uh, and it's just the way I'm like drawn to things and scenes. It's yeah, that I, atmosphere. It builds, I knew it's constantly building. It in the it, very yeah. first scene of the show, the twins in their room, I knew a scary thing was going to pop out. But when it happened, I wasn't ready. It, it's you know aware I mean? of that too. It knows where you're looking at. Do you know what I mean? Like it, yes. it knows where the yes. audience is going to yes. look, and so it takes advantage of that. Like the luggage thing, it knew you would look to it, and it just luggage, yes. but it still scares you. And so when you're not paying attention, I mean, according, I, I don't know. I remember when this first came out, there was something on the internet where it was like. 58 ghosts you didn't realize were in the background and so when you watch this uh, show you'll realize like oh my god is that something in the background and yes there's like, something uh, happening th- there is like you can rewatch it two three four times where there's a ghost or a figure in the background where that is just like kind of part of the environment but yes they are playing with composition with framing and things like that and the the other thing that <laughs> I can hear myself the other thing uh <laughs> It's hold, fucking hold throwing on. me off. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Muted, muted. The so the visuals are sh- very striking, um, but also the just like the poignant moments are really dragging me in. Um, I, these are a couple yeah. of things that like structurally I think are a little silly. Like, uh, spoiler alert: one of the siblings dies, and one of the other siblings is a mortician, and she's like, "No, I'm gonna embalm my sister." And it's like, okay, that's kind of don't oh, don't play with right. those lights, please. Thank you. My son's still awake. Uh <laughs> I was like, you know, that's kind of whatever that your sister has to be the one that does that, you know. And and I felt kind of strong like the the way that everyone around her was reacting was you shouldn't do this. I was like, yeah, you shouldn't do this. But my god, they know when to flash back at the right moments. She is laying on the slab dead. And the mortician sister is doing the makeup for her to make her look more realistic. And they cut to uh, that sister on her wedding day doing her makeup. Mm. And I was just like, oh, my God, like tears started flowing. Because it's just like, I mean, just how beautiful of a moment that was to to be this the sister to your sister. You're doing the makeup. You're making Mm. this big day so magical for you. And if you think about it in a timeline, I mean, how many more days happened? And then all of a sudden she's doing the makeup on her corpse. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, my God, that's so sad. I have a son. I I really react to the Luke character because he's he's sitting there. He's not being listened to. Uh, he gr- he grows up and you see him and he's a drug addict and you and you realize that Nelly is also kind of troubled and you're like why are these kids so troubled as adults oh why because of this fucking childhood trauma that's happening what it's yeah. it's blowing my mind what's great about these sh- this show too is that it takes like each episode focuses on each character 
So, you know, if yes. you're like, okay, we're now we're going to talk about this character, but then it revisits things that you've already seen in the past, but from a different perspective. I like, I like that we're seeing this, this same moment through like three or four different characters' yes, perspectives. Which is, uh, and it, it gets you excited to be like, up, like on which the time person are we going to do next? Yeah. Yeah. One thing I really loved about it is that it just really grounds the the haunting element to it. It's not just like, oh, this house is cursed by spirits. And I'm without like giving anything away, it's more of just like everything that happens is a result of something far more sinister earlier on, like and that is a part of this story. Like the the way that everything intertwines is beautiful and terrifying. Mm. Like, and that's what oh. makes it so unsettling. It just like really just kind of roots itself into you know. It's just uh, and so as it unfolds, you're just like on the edge of your seat, just like with the realization of what's going on. And but listen, again, I don't giving anything else. I about, don't want to over talk it because I'm not done yet. I will be done by the next time we talk about it. But I want to talk about a couple quick hand more, uh, handful of things. The casting is beautiful. Yeah. I love the child to adult, and not only child adult, but the uh, the children of the parents. You know what I mean? Yes. Whether they're kids or adults, they look like those actors. I mean, yeah. it, it, it could not be a more perfectly cast ensemble. I I I I feel like they are a family immediately uh and i'm gonna be real about something rachel vice is that rachel vice right she's coming uh, in no. no that's that girl that looks like rachel vice yes who is I, she i think uh she's uh, she's like the significant other You're talking about the mom yeah the well, mom Not us on IMDb right now, you guys. Hit us I, up on I social media. IMDb. We're at we're at Punch Drunk Nerd, <laughs> you guys. There's no lull in this episode. Okay, you like, Kala, you subscribe. Kala yeah, Kala think... Kajina. Yeah, uh, yo, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you right now. I pay attention every time she's on scene. Okay, or like, is it Kate oh. Siegel? Are you talking about the mortician? No, I'm talking about the mom, Carla. Uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But also, uh, but also so, Theo well, too. No wonder. Gr- grown she looks Theo. like Rachel Vice. So uh, you talk about Car- that, you talk about you talk about Carla, and I will say when this podcast goes up, uh, Mike Flanagan's newest series, "The Fall of the House <laughs> of Usher," will be out oh, on yeah. Netflix. Um, I'm ready, October twelfth when we come out, October thirteenth, it will already be released. Uh, and you know what, Miguel, I will probably be watching this new series, and Ed, I'm sure you'll be watching it, and we can discuss it um, on this podcast. But she, Carla Gugino. The person you're talking about, Miguel, she will also. I've be seen in her in series. something else. What else is she in? She's in so much. She's in The Watchmen. Uh, she's in American uh, Gangster, S- Spy Kids. Oh, American, American gangster. gangster! That's it, dude. Okay, she's Russell now... Crowe's wife. Yeah, I know, I know, Ed. She's no, my Miguel. wife. Okay, you don't fucking tell me that. No, no, that's right. why I think you like her so much. I, I get it. I get it. Um, no, I'm having a great time with the show. I'm going to watch the rest of it. We're going to talk about it. We can talk all the spooky seasons. I want you to know that I am terrified. Kristen the other day was like, you look so stressed right now. And I'm like, because I fucking am. All right. <laughs> like, I cannot stand spooky season, but I'm trying. Okay. And, uh, so, uh, I, okay. Hold on. I know we haven't talked about it, but I, I want, I put a new movie on our Plex account and I want y'all to watch it by the end. By, let's see. Oh. I didn't realize we talked about Plex on the podcast. All right, let's do um, it. You know what? Well, because I can't do it on the 25th because we're going to talk about Scorsese. Maybe we'll do Scorsese. it. Scorsese. I got to watch all the Scorsese movies by the 25th? You don't have to watch all of them. Just We have a ranking. Enough so you can make a... a I'll watch the ones I haven't again. seen. Okay. That's uh, the point. Because I wanted, I wanted you know to watch... The way you talk to me sometimes it makes me so mad. <laughs> I wanted us to watch Talk to Me. That was a movie that I wanted us to watch. But, oh, I uh, love that movie. Yeah, you haven't seen it. So maybe we'll do it November 1st, you know. Talk to me. The scary and movie. I'm Bring your wanky. Uh, so, yeah, check it out. A oh, yeah, yeah. House, Fall of the House of Usher now being released. I haven't the seen Australian it. Australian film. It. And, uh, okay, Ed, what else? Do you got something that you haven't uh, you been into? Did I watch something? I watched the another haunting. haunting. <laughs> yeah, for my... <laughs> 
uh, for my birthday, I took the day off. Uh, I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with the uh, adventures of Hercule Poirot and this new series of Kenneth Branagh films. Wow. Wow. Um, and uh, so this is the third in that trilogy. The first one was Murder on the Orient Express. The second one was Death on the Nile. Uh, and my mum is obviously a big Agatha Christie fan. And so obviously. I, I had mentioned in passing, like, oh, we could go see that. And that's what we ended up doing on my birthday. Um, and this, I, to its credit, this one was much better than Death on the Nile. Yes! Um, yes! Let's go! <laughs> Death on the Nile sucked. Um, <laughs> Terrible movie. So bad. Uh, but the first but, one is so good. I, mean, I, want, gonna, I want this to be good. I, I'm excited yeah. to see this, this one, one for sure. This one was uh, good, and but they, they mixed it up a little bit to kind of incorporate that kind of spooky, haunting feeling because the premise is like uh, this girl died in this uh, it, uh, Venetian uh, house mansion, if you will, and she uh, the the idea being that this house is haunted because it used to be an orphanage where a bunch of children died and they drove this girl crazy and Hercule Poirot is there to solve the case and disprove the fact that maybe like she died like a, sco going like a scooby doo mystery kind of thing uh, yeah basically and uh and i mean essentially that's how it unfolds um but it's it they do a good job of building up that tension and uh you guys are familiar with the original thor movie directed by kenneth branagh and yes! the, those dutch angles uh he that man is all up about dutch angles in this film so like it is very up close and personal, but it's very effective and it works. Yeah, thank you, Louise. <laughs> um, it's it works for this genre. Um, and as always, it's got like a fun ensemble. You've got Michelle Yeoh, you got Tina Fey, you've got um, uh, Jamie Dornan. Um, yeah, my girl from uh, Yellow Jackets. No, no. Yellowstone. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I, this yes. was, I, I know I, I've mentioned this a lot. This was one of those movies that I fucking saw the trailer <laughs> and I said, I want to see this I movie. See it and a trailer blew my mind because they do a really good job about like setting up this horror movie, like spooky vibe. And you're like, oh, okay, I've kind of seen it. And then all of a sudden, uh, par whoa shows up and you're yeah. like oh this is one of those movies yes let's yeah. fucking go and it felt totally tonally different than the second movie yes. okay which was terrible that and i loved the first one so much and i feel like i i'm kind i'm very excited to see this one i want to see it i think i think you'll enjoy this one it, it definitely just ha is having more fun and it's just more playful with the genre than the previous one and uh yeah no i mean it was a fun time my mum enjoyed it sarah enjoyed it sarah got jumped you know just like what? got got jumpy in her seats oh, like okay the, like they were, the the jumpy moments got her kind of thing i was gonna be like ed uh, where were you all right I, I was watching the movie what are you doing um and it's short and sweet it was like an hour and 45 minutes so it was like it didn't overstay its welcome it, it hit all the it, it was just solid entertainment it was good uh you know didn't like change the the movie industry or anything like that but it was, it was, it was entertaining it was, it was entertaining it, it was yeah. better than the second movie the, so the, much better let's go someone, when i went I, to school they were like okay is it art no is it entertaining okay you know what i mean like if you're not going to be art you're going to be entertaining if you're not going to be entertaining then you got to be art like there, there are these two yeah. things and i feel like if you can satisfy one of them then i agree Exactly. There you go. And, and exactly what I got. Uh, so yeah, uh, the haunting in Venice. Um, I don't know if he's got, planning on doing more. He hasn't announced any more. But I, mm. you know, I if he can find a way to kind of spice it up each time, sure. But the death of the Nile was like that. Let that me movie you. almost put me off of seeing this movie. You know, Luis, I mean? have you seen that movie? 
No, uh, I haven't, but I want to see Haunting of uh, Venice for sure. Death on the Nile has a whole origin story for, a for fucking Poirot's mustache. And I said, <laughs> I'm out. Okay, I can't. The the way the way they were like he went to fucking war and got a battle scar and had to grow out the stash to hide it. I was like, stop, okay, no. stop. Uh, I have a no. Question. It wasn't good. I have a question about Hunting in Venice. Um, yes. Sorry. Um, soundtrack. This is made by Hildur Gudinter, who did mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. Oscar award winning movie Joker. Joker. Yeah. So, put put some respect on his name. Her name. Hilder. Uh, uh, Nothing that really stood out. I'll be honest. Amb ambience is kind of the, is kind of what. You yes. Got. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. All right, that's all I need to know. Thank you, Miguel. You were going to say something. I wasn't. I was going to talk shit. It doesn't matter. I'm so excited about this movie, though. Yep. Spooky season. Ed, can we talk about something real quick? We didn't. Let's get down to some uh, real shit real quick. What didn't we get down to? But yeah, go for yeah. it. Oh, it's not here. It's not in the notes. Hang on one second. Uh, Ed, notes. hey, real quick. Let me just check my calendar real quick. Oh, Ed, you had a birthday last week. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, you did. You Let's know what I mean? We it. we briefly mentioned it last week. Uh, yes. That was pre-recorded three weeks in <laughs> advance. But uh, Ed, baby, did you have a good birthday? It was a great birthday. Drink I... from your Stanley Cup. Have a sip of water. Go ahead. Get, oh. get hydrated. The fucking... <laughs> 392 ounces of water, Stanley Cup. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm at I am at the bottom. Yeah. Hey, yeah. did you have a good birthday? It was a great birthday, thank you for asking. Yes. Uh yeah, I had a great time. Ate some really good food. Saw a good movie. What movie did you uh, see? A Haunting in Venice. Okay. Were you even listening? De Luis, <laughs> he fucking just said it, okay? <laughs> I kind of um, okay. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, it was it was a good time. Uh, you know, would have been so much better if I had got to spend it with you guys. Oh, baby! But no, it was, it was fun. I was happy. Well, but, good. I'm glad you had a good birthday. You know, we didn't get to say it last week, but I love you, man. I hope you had a great time. Can't wait to you. do it. In, I, I'm looking forward to 35. Okay. Yeah, we uh, are. Luis is 37 or whatever it is. Shut the fuck up about this. You're so shit. fucking old. <laughs> I was like 35. That's old news. You know what I mean? <laughs> you wish. I tell you, what, I, tell you what, I tell you what. I feel like things are. I, I'm like, okay, I got a, I got a rhythm now. Clean this, clean that, get this, get that, get this, get that. We're like, we're, we're really doing it now. You know, it, once you get Luis, to I got to tell you, me and Ed. Me and Ed are onto some shit. You you don't clean by yourself anymore, okay? No, I clean by myself for sure. No, no, you get a service. You gotta get a service. Or you get your wife to help you. No. Whoa! <laughs> oh, Ed, canceled. Ed, no. what the fuck? No, no. I that's my what job. You're going with my it. job is to take care of it. She does all the thinking. Like, what are we? What are we eating this week? That's not my job. <laughs> that's too cook? much brain power. Uh, I'm a okay. sous chef, and I'm an incredible sous chef, mind you. Okay. I, I cut those that. carrots very well and those onions very well. Okay. Don't come at me. Um, I had happy birthday. I, I can't, you know, Thank you. if you're, if uh, Sarah wasn't taking all the attention next year, <laughs> I'd say I would go visit you, but obviously money is I, short. I don't know. No, I know. And you know, that's your problem. All right. You it know, is. Get your money up. Well, okay. what, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, ideas, I'm, gonna, Luis. I'm taking off my mic off the stand because i mean business. hell yeah dude listen hell yeah dude i'm trying to get a lot of points and if i can come and see you for your birthday i will okay uh, you I don't have to go hey, anywhere we're you, going you, to california for Ed's we're trying birthday. to go to california man wait guys you're being too what are you coming to my town it's not for you it's not for you not for you you <laughs> fuck Luis, <laughs> well it feels like that it honestly so... excuse me I mean... just because you live there doesn't mean it's for you okay yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't have to do break. a shit let me just get on my cow oh how nice you can it tag is. along um this is my no, we are, we're trying to go to uh this uh prime rib restaurant where they serve only prime rib and martin to go to california to do that and not texas uh, texas well, don't have to figure it out yet I mean, it sounds like Texas would be know. the place to get that kind of meat. San Diego is a fish town. San Diego, you get fish tacos, you get shrimp tacos, you get like those things. I don't, I don't, 
Okay, well, we, fucking Luis, Instagram sold us, okay? We fucking said we're yeah. going to San Diego. It's like this right? guy doesn't want us to show up or something. What, I do it, Ed, Ed, baby. Ed, baby, it's you and me, all right? Yeah, I'll see you there. San Diego. I'll, Let's I'll, go. I'll the be whale's there. vagina. <laughs> I'll go, Ed. I'm, all right. Thank you. I'm gonna go. Miguel, to- can you dig that Instagram up and uh, send it to the group? I- I feel like we've sent it 17 times. 17 times. I don't have that. I don't but yeah, I'll send Miguel. it again. I Maybe I'm not on that group chat. I will. I'm not on that I will. group chat. <laughs> well, me, me and Miguel share meat together on Instagram. That's Whoa, what we hang do. on, hang on. Pause, pause, <laughs> pause. We share Bro, our meat. <laughs> don't clip that. Don't clip that. All right. <laughs> Like, if Miguel sees a giant burrito, he wants to share it with me. The innuendos are too thick right now. All right, you need to calm down, all right? <laughs> Listen. But, uh, Dude, what an, what an off-the-rails uh, episode. You guys, we're back, okay? We're back. We're going to be hotter <laughs> Next than week is going to be so good. We're going to talk about the news. We're going to talk about a future discussion and what that's going to be. I don't know. Uh, maybe we'll talk did about we the... finish Ahsoka? Did anybody do that? I did you finish Ahsoka. Okay, I, I don't spoil am it. I, I need am to I going to talk it. about it? Probably I'm gonna not. Hop off. I'm going to hop off. Miguel, what did I just say? I said but I watched it, but I'm not going to talk about it. All right. I'm not going to talk about it right now because I haven't finished it. All right. All right. Bro. I don't know if we need to talk about it. Uh, just ah. a little bit. Ah. I'm gonna. I'll put it in my what I've been into, so I can talk about it. All right. How about that? Um. Listen, honestly, Miguel, I know you were trying to end the podcast. You had a really good segue. You were like, "Oh yeah, my god, do you have something it. else?" No, oh. I, I don't. But you know what? I'm, I'm having oh. a good. T- I'm having a good time. I don't want it to end, and I just want to hear your thoughts on Paw Patrol the movie. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Fuck. All right. I just want you to know that Barbenheimer was the summer, and Saw Patrol was the winter. Saw okay. <laughs> I was this close to accidentally doing Saw Patrol this last weekend, okay? I told Kristen, first off, like, years ago, Kristen and I, before my son was born, we sat down and we watched all of the Saw movies, and so the new one's coming out, and I'm like, do you want to go see the Saw movie? And she was like, no. And I was like, oh, okay, I thought that was like a moment in my life, okay. Uh, But because I got the subscription... We saw Paw Patrol for my son, and I was like, "We might as well, we might as well go see Saw Patrol." And she was like, "No, I don't want to go see Saw." And I was like, oh, "Okay," but Paw Patrol was good. Uh, it was very just, you know, by the numbers. I thought visually it was pretty good, um, <laughs> but you like that gorilla style filmmaking. The way the way the camera shook, I said, "We're fucking seeing shit that I've never they're seen." Like, before. They're but, like, "We're superheroes now, Paw Patrols." And, What's and our name? The way Paw Patrol superheroes. Okay, and first off, they go from fucking Paw Patrol to Mighty Pups. All of a sudden, they like they like Mighty Morphin Power Ranger themselves. I saw the trailer. I tell you, that. dude. No, yeah, I. I went into this movie. I was like high expectations. I said this is going to be the best movie of the year. Uh, <laughs> it was, you know, I, I told myself I was like beat for beat. I was like, okay, in the next they're going to be sad because fucking this person doesn't There's have a betrayal. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was, it was like, oh, okay, all right. Well, you know what though, I got a hand it to Miguel for being just like you know a good parent. Uh, I was telling him before we started recording that, like, uh, Lily was excited for this movie because we, you know, we've seen a few movies this year and they had the trailer in front of it. Or, you, you know, know, you see a poster and, uh, you know, it, the movie came out and I didn't say a word. Uh, Good just for you. It, a float on by and wave it on the way out. I um, appreciate that you said I was a good parent because I definitely told Kristen, my wife, I said... You could go see Paw Patrol with him while I go see something else. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I did was, that on I, Father's Day. I did that on I Father's was, Day, and that was that was up. a veto. I well, on Father that. on Father's Day, you get a pass because it's your day. You a know? little bit of a pass, but I still felt like a dick. Uh, I went to go see wow. Spider Man again, and I sent them off to go see it, Elemental, um, which I'm glad. I hey, I'll tell you what, choice. though. I tell you what, though. Paw Patrol, Elemental, Elemental, a better movie. 10 out of 10. Well, yeah, yeah, I fucking hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, no. Uh, How many yeah. times are we going to save Adventure Bay? You know what I mean? Humdinger. <laughs> well, good Can for you, just, I'm you guys, sure Forrest enjoyed it. He had a great time. Good. I'm done. 
Can we just stop? Yeah, we can stop. <laughs> Listen, I had a good. I don't time, want to though. do this anymore. No, I, I love you guys. Dude. I want. I want to do this forever. You know. Uh, but no, we have to end. Of course. Listen. Um, we're back. We're here. We're here for it. Next week, we'll talk about some news, future discussion. I don't really know what that's going to be, but tune in. In two weeks, we'll do uh, Mark Scorsese's new movie, Killers of the Flower Moon. We'll, we'll also talk about the movie. We'll also do our top oh, ten rank ranking. It. We'll finally rank it. Uh, all the Scorsese, our favorite Scorsese movies. Uh, but until then, listen, it's been me, Luis Gonzalez, and with me has been... It's Miguel Sanchez. <laughs> Dead bull. <laughs> and until next time, see you later. Let me tell you, it's been really nice because now that the wedding's over, I can finally drink. And so like the last like 12 episodes, I've been able to drink. And... Show us the bot. The bot? Oh. The buffle. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. I'm going to continue the podcast because I said the podcast is over, but it's not. Um, we had to take all the alcohol home, and a bunch of alcohol that we have left over is this Sauvignon Blanc from Cream Crawford. You didn't get to return it. Return it? Why would we return it? Who gives a drink fuck? It? Yeah, well, no, somebody, uh, somebody said that you were any unopened bottles you were able to return. No, well, but I'm not doing that. I'm gonna just drink it all. So, but why? Yeah. I, I, I've been, I I've been, I've been back from. I Europe. imagine that was a lot of money, and I would want my money back every every dinner. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, acting uh, like he paid for his wedding. Yeah, he's right. Exactly. <laughs> Listen, I didn't pay for this portion of it. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to be enjoying the the benefits of it. What I'm trying to say is, Ed, I went to Europe, and e every dinner I had was a bottle of wine. So now I'm back home. I'm having a bottle of wine. I'm having your wine. Surprise! Oh yeah. Surprisingly, listen. I'm not. I'm not promoting it, but I was surprised by this Kim Crawford not being terrible. I thought it was going to be bad. And since all the red wine was kind of drank, which makes sense because everybody's going to drink the red wine in my wedding, I have a bunch of white wine. And this white wine did me pretty good for the whole podcast. Look at it. Let's That's go. A, Kim Crawford is a, a standard across uh, so many restaurants. I can't, can't believe go it. Wrong. She did a good job. You can't go wrong. She was an actor, and now she makes some wine. Good for her. Good for good her. For, uh, good for you. Good for America. Good for me. Guys, what are we going to say at the end of the podcast now? Dicks out. No, we can't keep saying that. We're going to get canceled. It's so aggressive. It is very <laughs> aggressive. Sometimes I've had to edit that out in the podcast. Um, <laughs> I have I actually have a little surprise I wanted to end. I know, Miguel, you wanted to end the podcast, but can I just have one more no, surprise? Keep going. Let's go. Hold on. Yeah, well, yeah, let's go. Yeah, I have to pee, but it's fine. Oh, no, not that fucking... Oh no. oh no. Oh god, it's an Amazon package. If you go to youtube.com slash at uh ampersand star punch drunk nerd, you'll see us. Luis. So I got this a long time ago and I got it on oh our break. Oh my god. And we always ended our podcast this way. And what would I say? I would say cousin <gasps> cousin. No! Yeah, let's go, oh, no. dude. <laughs> Yes, dude! Oh my god! Nice. Please, Official. please put it on right now. Okay, put it okay. on right now. Let's see. Does it fit? I don't know. Hold on. Did oh, Luis get fat in Italy? Let's I, find out. I, really I thought he was about to pull out like a bear sweater, and I was about to hang okay, it. Okay, so this is officially from the Mattel store, and nice. Uh, I, this is like official con, like. Yeah. Headphones off, okay. sweater on. Let's this go. This is official. This is. It's in such stuff. a big box, right? Am I crazy, Miguel? It, I thought it was going to be a baseball bat. Big... I or something like physical. Tall. Not, yeah, not like First a off, very comfortable. As I put this on. Oh yes. Let's Wait go. until a couple of washes. What a fucking episode! Let's go! Let's Yo. fucking go, dude! Yo. This is Give us a spin. So, this is so comfortable right now. I'm it really looks comfy like, as hell. I am Knuff. Yo, dude. Luis, send us the link right now, okay? Yeah. That sexy bitch. Uh, no, I got I got this on, I think it was on Instagram or something, but it's the official Mattel on Mattel.com. You can get this I am Knuff uh, po uh, poster, uh, sweater. I think this is the medium. But I feel very comfortable in it, and I feel like yeah. Look is at my, Ed. I feel like this is my uh, what's what? it called Halloween thing. I just need to like get blonde hair. I look look at Ed right now. He's like googling. He's like, I am Mattel. 
Mattel.com. I tell you what, I did I did do it in payment. So I like I didn't pay all right away. <gasps> On a hoodie? Please, how much is it? I think fifty nine ninety nine. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I get it. You just got married. You just went to Europe. I get wait, it. Wait, what's the problem? Is that expensive? I mean, that's a hoodie. What if you wanted something cheaper? It's gonna be cheap equipment, cheap clothes. Well, sure, no, sure. I just, no, I no, just no. Don't, I, just I don't. I don't, I, a... I don't payment plan a hoodie. That's what I'm saying. All right. Okay. Well, I was payment well, still... plan. I was payment planning a lot of stuff. Okay. I was payment planning. Let me payment. payment let me payment plan that new iPhone. I, Will we show me I, that I, iPhone one more time. Oh, look at this, baby. You want to tell you what else I payment planned? I <laughs> okay. I got back from Europe. Ooh, I'm loving espresso every freaking day. You know what I'm payment planning? I'm payment planning an espresso machine because your boy's going to be making espressos every fucking day. Let, yo, dude, are we about to do espresso machines? Because we have one, okay? Oh, like, I, I'm all about espressos now. I'm, I'm all about how much? How much did you pay for yours? I, well, it was Prime Days uh, a couple days ago or today, yesterday. Do you drink it black? Baby, I drink it black. Yes. Just give me a little... We, st- I yeah. said it before. We got an espresso machine that was originally $600. One hundred and twenty dollars. Okay, I got a, okay. I got a like a lung. It's called a lung perlo or something like. That. I don't know what it's called, but it's, I, chow I got chow. It, I got it for like ninety eight. I got it for ninety eight dollars. It's for two. It'll make two espressos, and then Let's I, got go. the, I got this little hammer that you push in, you squeeze it in there, and like, oh, you know, bro, you got, got a porta filter, and, and then I got little espresso cups so that yeah. it's not a big cup. No, I'm, I'm having Let's a good go. time with it. Dude, the way I have Americanos every single day of my life now. I uh, know, dude. I I'm am Canuck. Let's fucking go. Welcome to the club, Luis. Honestly, this is like a two and a half hour podcast and the last 45 minutes could have been deleted. Let's go. I'm here for it. Ed, we what fucking t- win. What do you want to talk about now? <laughs> hey, can we, we're, can done. We we're, end, done. we're done. Can we're we done. End on, can we end on one quick thing? Okay. And I'm, I'm talking, to, I'm a hop off. What you guys were like pretty up in arms about this Lego Miss Marvel? <laughs> uh... Yes, so uh, Lego and Marvel came out with a new collaboration where it's like uh, every Marvel movie they come out with a new piece, and it's just like a ship about from the Marvels, yeah. and it looks pretty basic. And everybody in the Lego community is pretty pissed because it's expensive and pretty basic. I mean. Get in line about the whole expensive thing. It's like every decent looking set right now is a lot of money. Uh, as you know what's crazy? As far as this goes, this was like $120, right, Luis? And it was, it just didn't look very exciting. Like minifigs, great. You get three of them plus but a kitty cat. But it's cat. so basic. Man. It's such a basic of a ship. Like it's like, I'll probably tell you this. No, what I agree. in the movie. You know? For yeah. someone, for someone who's not into Lego, you guys sent that link earlier, and I was like, "Yep." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "What's going on?" Wow, we're upset about this Lego all of a sudden. I, you know, it just I could, seemed pretty. I, I, it, it seemed on brand. I could have I mean? texted Ed separately, but I wanted to include you so you could experience what we're feeling. And you know I appreciate what I mean? that. And you know, one day Miguel will strike you. Nah. Eh. Eh. The I'm Miguel Sanchez. You guys, what a fucking episode. <laughs> what a good episode. I'm Luis Gonzalez. With oh, me has yeah. been... Ed Bull. There we go. And until next week, uh, cousin, you are... I, yeah. Like, can we lose the cousin? No. Because I go know f- what that means. Go fuck yourself. I, go no, fuck yourself. I feel like for cousin. inclusivity, we should be doing something that we can all relate to, not something that you're going to shove down my throat every episode. Cousin. No. Cousin, I let me cousin. shove something down your throat. Cousin, please. Uh, love you guys. <laughs> <laughs>